Yo, everybody, what's up? How's everybody doing? Man, it's been a fun, fun weekend. Me and Lester took a dredge out yesterday. What a great time. Got Remy in the back room making some coffee. He'll be right back. So how's everybody doing? Hey, Mary. Lester looked poor. Did we have some fun yesterday or what, brother? All Things Country's in here. Aqua Donkey. We have Mega Dog up in here. Joseph Nolan stopped in. Jamie Pusher and Barnacles was in. He went to bed. Whipple Creek Racing stopped in earlier on. Culver's in here somewhere. And the link is pinned at the top if anybody wants to come up. So uh, we got a little bit of cons from, from yesterday I'm going to run. And then uh, we're going to go through an A3 Skywarrior Honey Bay. So cool. <laughs> Hope everybody's well. T Rep. Travis for three prospect. Frank Luterate. What's up, man? <laughs> T Rep says, just a check in. Miss T Rep cracking the whip here. Not, to, not in a good way. <laughs> Frank, let me throw you a wrench, brother. All things country says he quit smoking, but bought some cigars for the eclipse tomorrow. Figure if it's the rapture, as they're talking about, I'm going out on my bucket, smoking and drinking beers the way I live. <laughs> Oh, uh, Shannon Dalton, my brother, what's up? So I got a little bit of cons. I don't know if Lester went through his yet. I don't think so. But he did have his 500 sub giveaway today, which is pretty cool. And uh, Hobo Rob ran some chunky, chunky gold, man. He's got to he's gotta send Lester an email. I don't know if he did yet, but I would get on that. <laughs> Again, the link is pinned at the top if anybody's interested in coming up. So what what's up with the weekend? Anybody doing anything interesting? Other than me and Lester? <laughs> Yeah, I like uh, Rob. He's an awesome dude. Lester said, Rob ain't communicated yet. He usually pops in, Rob. We'll let him know. I mean, uh, Lester. So I had uh, I had run my Green Mountain Gold track. Got some cons in here. A lot of black sand. Look at that black sand, man. <laughs> and these are the bigs. Didn't get a whole lot. We were uh, we were getting Lester's dredge set up and getting it running, and uh, I just kept feeding me. Uh, like I would help Lester a little bit. I, I don't know. Maybe some of you guys can help us out. Um, we had the dredge running, and we couldn't get it. We couldn't get it to like when you dropped in your your feed tube with the foot valve in it. We couldn't get it just to pump water out. We had to kind of like put it up in the into in the stream where the stream was running into the back of it to get it to work. And it shouldn't work like that. Ski searcher, what's up, man? And then um, you know, we shut it down and then it would start up fine. As long as we had as long as we had the basket upstream, it was fine. But then like when we put it down in front of the dredge, it wouldn't pump water. It was weird, man. I don't know what the problem was. Do you see anything into it, Lester? Did you read into it or anything like that? Brad Hayden, what's up, brother? Welcome to the show. So we're going to go through these uh, these little bit of cons I got here from the creek, from the PA Creek. And then, like I said, we got us a, we got us a three Skyweir honey bay to go through. Very cool.
<laughs> gotta take the dog out and drop a deuce. <laughs> Can already see some bigger plus size corsane. But once we got that dredge running, man, it was punching down quick. Like we cleaned off a whole bunch of bedrock and stuff like that. Brad Hayden, is that you, brother? Wave. What's up, Brad? What's up, Dan? Not much, man. So Lester said that he hasn't had time to take a look at it. Yeah, it's weird. I was wondering maybe the foot valve's hanging up or something, Lester. I don't know. That's what I think it is, is the faulty foot valve. Chain yeah, we, had to, we, had, no. we had to actually put it, put it into the flow, Brad, and, and uh, get it, I guess get it, get it to push it open. Yep. I've had, uh, I don't know if it was like a faulty batch. I've had to do that with one. And then uh, I figured it was faulty, got a different one, and it worked. Yeah, he got, uh, he got his stretch down there at Carolina Prospectors in Asheville, North Carolina. Bill's a great dude. He owns the uh, he owns the store down there. I bought my hoses for my dredge down there. What files? What's up, man? How you doing tonight? Some coarse black sand up in this bad boy. Not a shortage of black sand on that rock bottom creek. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Lester had about six, six or eight pounds of black sand <laughs> in his dredge when we cleaned it out. I dropped a video of the, the clean out today at 12 o'clock. And Lester's got the clean up and was panning it out at the end of the day on his channel. It's a heavy little pan here, I'll tell you that. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Have a good night. Hey, Free Scott, we just, just came back in the house somewhere in Ohio. What's going on, Brian? Brad Hayden. Hey Brian, are you going? Hey, hey Brian, are you going to uh, Freedom Fest this year? Looks like Jamie came back in. I thought he was going to bed. Hey, Lester said about seven pounds of black sand out of that dredge yesterday. It was a good time, man. We had a great time yesterday. Got that bad boy out there. Aqua Donkey, once what's we, up? Once we got it working. Mary, I heard you're take you're you're gonna partake in the Orby War. Oh, oh that'll be pretty fun. <laughs> Oh, same old, same old, like a donkey, getting ready to go to Alaska, just moving the shop out to the, uh, the storage, get the motorcycle and everything put away, getting close, getting close, a couple days here, handful of days. 403, what's up? Western Barnacles, somewhere in Ohio, A3, Lester, all you guys, what's up, everybody? Brian, somewhere in Ohio. Y'all doing great, man, awesome, everybody in here. Y'all hit that like button, please, if you haven't already. Sure. Ah, PA. PA, I already know who my first target is, too. Shannon Dalton, what's up? How you doing tonight? Would you care to elaborate, Mary? 
who your first target is. Could be a lot of people. <laughs> you don't mind if I throw out something here in PA, do you? You got the Go ahead, brother. We got the nine finger mining, Alaska nine finger mining uh, giveaway tub going on over there. Ten dollars an entry. It's got a lot of stuff going into that tub. Rocks, gems, minerals, gold. I saw that. Yeah, he, he's been getting into it. It's ten dollars an entry. If you guys want to get a hold of him, uh, you can go to Alaska Nine Finger Mining and watch his last video, the GAW tub, and that will fill you in some more. If you want to pay for your entries, it'll be NFM 2020, capital letters, NFM 2020 on PayPal. So if you guys run over there and help out his cause, that would be super appreciated if you can. If not, that's okay. At least a subscription or a like would be cool too, you know? I wish Other I than that, I don't have anything else going on. I got my spots over there today. I wish I could you, get over there and help out, man. I can't afford to pay attention right now. Yeah, I, Creed's good dude, bud, but I, I personally can't afford it myself. It's not all good. least I can do is just help push out the Push out the word. Yeah, I felt like a douchebag. I was asking him for his cash app, and then I gave it to me, and I forgot about it till today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, things happen, bud. Uh, yeah, he's got quite a bit of good stuff going in that jar there. That tub's going to be nice. Same thing with Flower Gold Wizards. He's got that big old giveaway tub. He's trying to hit, what was it, 100,000 subs? <laughs> He's got that thing filling up. That's gonna be big. A million subs. Yeah, dude. Like I think it was a hundred thousand. But Look at a hundred thousand, that's a lot. That's a fewer, Lester. I got a I got a fewer in here in the big stuff. Maybe not. That's from the same bag that you that I have one from you, same spot. Yeah. Yeah, you had like round stuff that eroded out of rock there. Like it come right out of the ore, not too far from it. I don't know about that. Let me see. Do I got something here where I can try and crush that. <laughs> All things country goes. Flower Gold Wizards just wants folks to tell him he has a nice can. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna be able to get the Supposedly, I'll be able to get to try that flower gold wizard smooth water or whatever recirculating head that he's got when I get up there to Alaska. I think uh, I think Aqua Donkey got one of them, don't he? Or uh, Culver got one, I believe. Yes, he did because he used it on the uh, sluice that he got from you, the uh, diamond plate one. I think we're getting a 10 inch up there to try out. So do a cool review on it boy it'll be useful for me i don't like cleaning up at the river and that is not a piece of gold no pirate huh broke right up yeah pirate yeah they're pretty good i got one of them uh, smooth waters i like it yeah, I, I mean, when I seen the design put together and I watched him running it, I was like, he's on to something there. It's pretty simple. There's no hardware on it, and it comes off from the sluice. So you could put your chute back on the darn thing and run it on the creek if you wanted to. If you have a puddle, you can drop the darn pump in the puddle and just run your tailings into the pile or into the hole. Just move your tailings out of the way every now and then and keep running from the hole. Yep, the 10 inch will be nice because we can use it out on the water up in Alaska. And then when we want to use it at home for cleanup stuff, we can put a finer mat down in the bottom and do cleanup at home with it. Ooh, look at that black sand, boy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in there. It almost looked like Vermont dirt, dude. That, that bag that you sent me, I, I ended up opening that with Laura, and she's been down here on the river plenty with me, and she knows the kind of riverbed that we're looking for. 
And I, I was telling her, and I think I told you on a video when you were scoping around there, how the rocks in the river look just like the gold bearing rivers that we got over here. They've got that green bedrock. They've got that quartz, lots of heavies involved in garnets. And you got plenty of black sand too. Yep. The only, thing, the only difference is all your rocks up there around it and ours are all jagged. At that, the locations that you went to. So there's two locations that we wanted you to go with us to and you didn't have time to that are about an hour, hour and a half south of here from our house. Right. And right. if you go down there, the rocks that you had in that bag were identical. They're the little flat wafer pieces. We call them little hockey puck pieces, man. They're flat little wafers. Right. Tons of it over on Buffalo Brook and Broad Brook. It's the same way over there. I have to classify to a quarter inch over there and pay attention for nuggets because there are little half gram pickers out of that river or the brooks down there. You got Zach in here. Lester Lepore is going to come up. Lester. What's up, everybody? What's up, Ron? Person, Lester. Hey, hey. You know what? I'm I'm not going to be able to run that little dredge out here. You know, we're really not supposed to anyway. But I'm going to be going second first week of June. I'm going to be going down to North Carolina to run it. But in the meantime, I am going to take some of the seven ounces of flower gold that I've accumulated over the years, and I'm going to smelt it and make capels or buttons out of it. Nice. So that's probably what's coming next for me. Heck yeah, that'll be cool. Hey, Lester, did you see what Brad said? It might be a bad foot valve on that. Yeah, I figured that. Remember I was saying that foot valve's not working right? Yeah. It, se it seemed like when you had a lot of pressure on it, it was working. It but when you didn't, it didn't want to. So, like, right. when we put it down the street there that second time, I took it and I smacked it a little bit. And it started working. So, I think I've got to take the foot valve apart and see if it's seizing up or what's going on with it. Yeah. They're not too expensive. They're only 12, 13 bucks. Really, I don't know. Maybe there's milk. really nothing wrong with it. Maybe maybe it just needs to be messed with a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Take it apart and see how it works. Because, I mean, it seemed like, un it would seem like if there's water pressure, like pretty good current against it, that would shut it. But that wasn't what was happening. That it was staying open under the heavy heavy water. But um, it didn't want to work in still water. So yeah, I don't know. I have to take it apart and look at it and see. You guys have got like a turbo style pump attached to that. I seen right. It's like a little turbo. That pump, that pump is awesome. This little Honda. Yeah, it is. That thing is awesome, man. I'm gonna tell you, you don't you don't want to get your hands in front of that nozzle. I seen you pick it up out of the water about an inch there to pull a rock out when you were having issues, but then you put your hand down and it was like <laughs> it got yeah, you. A there bit. go the fingers. There go the fingers. <laughs> I only got eight. I only got eight fingers now, damn it. <laughs> well, we got a nine finger and now we got an eight finger. Hey, who's Mr. Seven Finger mining? It was almost me. <laughs> it was almost you. <laughs> Dan, Dan took that thing across those bedrock crevices up by the bank. He sucked them things clean just like that. And I, I opened up holes quicker than I can with a shovel with that thing. You That's had a good one. That's an area out. And that was like, um, it wasn't a prototype. It wasn't a prototype. It was one of the first ones they made like that. They had keen adjusted that from a two inch to a two and a half. And, um, Stoning? Tell I'm, me confident. I'm confident. There's I'm a confident in that There's a valve in it somewhere, as you said, there's an issue. Foot valve is right by the cage. The water comes down the cage. I had two of you over talking. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Okay, well, so the, the foot valve is a little thing with like a round cage, like a can at the end of it with holes in it. Yep. That's where the water comes in. That's the intake. And it has a valve in it, a foot valve. So just like in a well, if the foot valve gets stuck, you're not getting no water. So I don't know why there's a valve in it. 
Oh, there is. It's, it's yeah, not anything you would turn I'm, I'm wondering why there's a valve in it. Oh, it's, it's all it is is like a damper. It's like a damper in there. Yeah, it holds flapper. the water in the pump. It holds yeah. the water in the pump once you prime it, so that it doesn't oh, all so run it back out. Prime when you shut it down. Right. Yep. And then uh, it'll start right back up for you. If not, you got to reprime it. Maybe it's hanging up, like he said. Yeah, he probably smacked it loose. Well, that's what happened the second time I started running with Dan there. Yeah, I'm thinking that it might be bent. It might be bent or something. You just have to take it apart and look at it. Is it a metal flapper? Is it like a a, a rubber? It's damper? Probably a little rubber, a little rubber damper. That's what I was thinking. I'm Maybe. thinking it is. Oh, you had quite the hole cleared off on that bedrock over there, Lester. How long did it take uh, no. you to clear that much? You know, I only ran over there for, I would think, actually ran for about maybe a half an hour. Yeah, 20 minutes, hey. half an hour. The, the ledge that I cleaned off him. was cleaned off in like five minutes. <laughs> you got some big flat rocks right above him. Oh, yeah, I could have dug into that, too. I could have dug yeah, into that. that. I was actually that. planning on it. But if you're going to long arm like that, you need to be able to sit down in the water to move the rocks and keep at it, you know. And just bending over and doing it will kill you. Yeah. yeah we, just, we just had hip waders on. <laughs> you need your wet stick for dang sure where you can just plop your ass down in there. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. Need that's right. That's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. I actually have a I have a snorkel in a wetsuit, so I'll be ready. I'm figuring by the time I get to North Carolina this next time, I'll just be able to just put a pair of shorts on and get in the damn water. Get in the water. So that was uh, you said it was a prototype last year. No, it's the first run of their new um, adjustment from a two inch to a two and a half, and that's a keen product. Okay. And they they did a lot of work on that. You could ask Bill at um Carolina Prospecting about it. So I'll tell you what, what, I love that thing, man. I can move a lot of dirt with that thing. Isn't there a difference with the uh, oh the front part of it that hooks to the dredge that makes a difference in the style? Or... Oh, the Venturi because... nozzle itself. A jet valve or a power Yeah, valve. the power jet inside the Venturi. Oh. Head. Yeah, and it also has the thing for, like, the dry land thing. It has a nozzle where you could hook it up and you can run it to, like, wash out dirt and wash out rocks out of the way and all, too. I didn't use that part. Out of the way. Yeah, Harry that, Terry's in the house. It's got it. Stony Creek Spark Chaser. What's up, brother? He was just out over in Washington. Oh, Stony got a Creek. Half gram. Welcome, Stony Creek. He got a half gram, three quarters of a gram over the weekend. That's not bad. Yeah. All right. He was, out there, he was out there in the rain. <laughs> Surprising part is I actually, I know I actually got some gold, but I've really never been able to work the bottom of those holes out there. So I know there's gold in the creek, but with that thing, I can get to the bottom of a hole. <laughs> I get right down to the bedrock and quick. <laughs> yeah. Next time, oh, I think they did. Year. I think they. Huh? I said the next time Didn't we go up that? there, I'm going. I'm, the next time we go up there, I'm going to drag all the way down from where I was digging up to that bush, all the way down on the, on that side of the bank. We we, we got. We got some nice plaster gold out of that clay. Yeah. yeah, you guys. I got some nice gold in that bag that PA sent up from over there. That was decent. <laughs> we were getting nice flakes last time me and him were over there just digging and sluicing. So I, I know I got gold. I, added, I added to that too, Remy. Yeah, I know. I know. I, you said you had yeah. spilled some on accident. Yeah. Same thing with yeah, but um, all. All of that didn't come from. Uh, PA because we only found like nine specs that one time. Okay, yeah. So and, uh, I added I to a, that. So yeah, I got a bag that had added stuff to it too from PA that was from Wrench on his channel as well. I ended up winning both PA bags, one from him, and one from Wrench. 
Well, it's nice to know that Wrench got a little bit of gold out there on that rainy ass day. <laughs> yeah. He had it a little bit of gold, but he, he added a little bit for Before him. Before we got too. kicked out. <laughs> yeah, we got that straightened out. Yeah. Spinning it break. All fixed. all fixed, though, all right? No more issues? Yeah, we're good. All right, good, good, good. Hey, Lester, I want to say thank you on behalf of PA there because he was stressing not finding any gold up there. It's nice of you to help point him in a direction. Well, I've been trying to point Dan in the right direction for a couple of years now. He's finally starting to catch on. That's all I got to say. Have, have, you, taught him to start, have you taught him to start chasing it and looking for it first? <laughs> You start looking for, for where it's going to be, and then you start chasing it. <laughs> yeah, boy, he gets gung-ho with that darn shovel, bud. <laughs> man, he does. Hey, you can't, you can't hate the man for trying. He get out there and dig a big darn hole, bud. He, he don't even know there's anything there. He's like, all right, here's a spot. Let's, let's get it. <laughs> Unstuck. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> just like, man, I remember back in the beginning, too, when I first got my gold trap, I'd just fucking, I'd find my own nice big hole, and I'd sit there, and I'd be like, all right, let's just dig it out. They'll run more dirt, more gold. <laughs> I just started running and running, and I was like, watching Mr. Gold Trap over there get quite a bit more than me, and he was definitely not digging as much as me, so I got a little bit jealous there for a bit, and I'm like, man, I got to figure out what the heck to do here. I'm watching him, and he's like, he's always testing, and I'm like, okay, even if we worked it last time we were there, we came back, you test again. You make sure you're in the right spot when you're digging, because, I mean, you're doing a lot of work by hand for very minimal return if you're not checking where the best stuff is. Well, I've been, I've been doing this for two years, YouTube, right? Yep. I found my first piece of gold, one piece, one tiny little piece. And then I didn't find any for like eight months, but that was up here. And then Lester took me down to North Carolina and I've been hooked ever since. I stuck my shovel in the ground down in North Carolina, Uwari National Forest, <laughs> and found 10 pieces in my first pan, my one shovel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, this is the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> yep, it'll do it. Man, I tell you what, I found my first three, four, five poops and a little little pinch of sand out of some bedrock that I pulled a piece off from on the bank of the wall of the river. And I pulled it out of the way and I took a little good pinch like flower gold wizard's pinch and threw that in the pan. I had three, four pieces in there and I was like, I was hooked ever since. I <laughs> it, it definitely gets you to love looking for it, man. But I love finding the heavy spot because, boy, at the end of the day, when you clean that up, it's just it's good to know that you worked all day long and you've got plenty of colors in the pan for it. That's a good feeling to know that you've chased it down and found it. And well, I went to a place called Media, called Media PA, and uh, I couldn't find gold for the longest time, man. And I went there one day at lunchtime. I was just checking out the creek, and I saw this big, thick band of black sand going around this inside bend. So I had my 24 ounce coffee cup in my hand. I downed the coffee and grabbed the lid and I scraped the whole, all the black sand off the top of the sandbar. You know what I mean? All the way around the inside bend. And uh, took it home and I, that's when I found my first piece of gold. I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> 24 ounce coffee cup of well, black let sand. Me, let me tell you about Dan. Dan will get in a creek and once he knows there's gold in it, He'll move a yard of dirt, but he don't always go to the right spot first. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't matter if you move a yard of dirt sometimes. If you're in North Carolina on um, Moccasin Creek, the gold's broadcast, so you can find gold. Mm -hmm. But if you don't go to the right spot in Pennsylvania, you can forget it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you've got to chase it. And the places like up where you guys are at and over here in Vermont, you really have to do your research to find the best ground you can because there ain't much in it. And, and and when you do find it, you have to really find a decent spot because, I mean, there you can have hay streaks that are only a couple inches wide around on a corner in a tailings line. And that little couple inch stringer of gold in that pile, I, I mean, the rest of it, there's barely anything. I mean, yeah, you get a good pan behind this rock, but you move one foot this way, there's nothing. You move one foot this right. way, there's nothing. It's just a little screw. No. You got to figure that if you if you're if you're digging pockets, that's a good thing. But 
you have to be able to dig the pockets in a line where the gold's dropping out in that creek. And you have to figure that out. Yep. So if you're digging behind a rock and you're getting a little, little, little uh, pocket of gold, you have to look Scott upstream, Short. you have to look downstream, and you have to look for the next rock that's big or whatever and dig that one. Don't spend your time digging in between. Nope. Just look for those pockets. What I do look in my pockets. In the gravel bars that I look in, if I look in a gravel bar, what I'm looking for is a hump in the gravel bar towards the front, the start, the upstream point of the gravel bar. I am looking for the highest hump or the largest classified amount of rocks in the pile, the highest point, because that's usually where the biggest rocks in that pile have fell out. And they'll be more towards the front of the gravel bars. In those real upstream tight areas where there's yeah. rocks I don't want to move, that's where I'm digging. Yeah, you might have to move more material, but that's where you're going to find your gold. That's the and better it's been there for a long time. That gold has been have, there for a long time. Yeah, if so up here, we can see areas where your gravel bar has been more stratified towards the front. The fines have been washed out of the front of the gravel bar, and you don't have as much fines in it. That's where I'll start looking. But I don't ever really go. One of the things that I benefit from up here is that a lot of people don't pay attention to where you have a con, a, like a intersection with two bodies of water. Say this one comes this way and this one's this way. That water, when it hits here, a lot of people go behind it and search behind it on that creek side. I always look in front because that's that spot that a lot of people miss. Is right in front yeah. and usually if we've got areas around here that get hit pretty good that's common knowledge on the inside bend or just downstream of a creek that intersects into another body of water yeah that's a very well-known spot but i will take those spots just in front of the creek because i know that the water coming in is an invisible barrier that the water has to hit and it's a your velocity slows down as it's coming to that creek so it'll drop out in front and after it the creek. swirls it swirls around right where the two streams meet yep. yeah yep. and yep. here's the other thing like about a gravel that. bar okay a lot of times gravel bars form because the gravels are piling up on bedrock yep they got something to lock to that can, that can screw you up that can screw you up because you don't know what's underneath the gravel bar till you start to dig and it's not like Georgia or North Carolina where you can dig just about anywhere and find a few specks of gold. So, yeah. yeah, we don't, we have blowout zones here. So we pay attention to where the bedrock is showing on the sides of the rivers if we can. And if we have took test holes on the banks and we see the bedrocks kind of diving down under the creek, we know it's under there. Just how far under the gravel right. bar, we don't know until we dig it. But I That's mean, problem, yeah. yeah, we get, if there's really big stones and there's no small gravels in there at all, that is a bad blowout zone. And it's going to blow every fine bit of material right up out of there. And you can it, move every damn rock that's there, but you're not going to find no damn gold yeah, unless you go the whole way down. Blown right out. The yeah, whole way that down. happens up here. We have, we have plenty of areas where it looks like there's a lot of stuff and you think the bedrock's a couple feet under and it's safe. But you get under a couple feet, two feet under, and then you notice, hey, these are all big rocks right on the bedrock. There's nothing here. Let's get the heck away from it. If you move downstream just yeah. to add where it thickens up. And I'll tell you something else. I learned this from a friend of mine from North Carolina. When you go down there, especially where you're having a lot of people that, that dig for gold, you get down to that river and you see that gravel bar that looks suspicious on, a, on an inside bend. But then you see that deep water on the other side bend where it's cutting into the bank. You might want to dig on the outside bend. Outside bend and not right on the corner on the wall after the corner. Because right. when it hits, or immediate even, velocity. Even, even a little downstream. Yep. Or even a little bit downstream. Yeah, it'll get if caught clay, in the walls of the high, high current side. Joey Brown on that. Clay on that side. Side. If there's clay on that side, skim the clay. Oh, yeah. Can do. Yep, on, that's Tony Creek said that. Yep, on the shelf. Yep, on the outside bend of those 90-degree turns where the water smashes against the wall and then goes left or right real hard, you want to go to the 
outside of the corner and just after where it smashes because that's where the gold's going to hit the wall and get dragged down the wall and create friction on all the roots and crap and it'll get caught on the side right there that's sacrilege you get you do understand that that's sacrilege what you're saying <laughs> i yeah, agree 100 percent yeah, it, it's, that, it, yeah you're not supposed to be on the outside bend you know <laughs> Yeah, that's not conventional wisdom, but I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of gold come out of places like that. That that's also true. I've seen flower gold wizards find it find it right at that smash point in 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 the gravels below it. Where it smashes it and the big rocks are laying, he digs in there and finds gold specks. Yeah. I've seen so also another scenario just like what you brought up, Lester. There's another one. So you know how you've got the 90 degree in the river and it creates the whirlpool pocket in the 90? Okay, that Where's is an invisible end? bowl of, like, imagine an invisible force field in the water, guys, in the chat. Invisible bowl of water that's in that. that just, just makes go. Right. When that just water is going up and right down in that wall. Down. Yeah, when that water is coming on the fast part of the water and it hits that wall of that bowl of whirlpool. Right when that water hits that bowl, that's where the gold's going to drop out. Not in the bowl. It's going to hit right at that barrier of water. It's going to slow the velocity down, and the gold will drop out right on the first part of the bowl where it hits that current. Hi, Colton. What's up, man? How you doing? James Colton. Stony okay, Creek. I'm trying to figure out who I'm talking to here. I can't. I got bad eyes. What, what's your name, sir? I'm James Lester. James Culver. James Culver. Remy's the one you're talking okay. to. I'm up here, buddy. Remy the Ripper, sir. Okay. Well, I'm looking at spending some time in New England, but it's going to have to wait till like early fall. But um, I was going to go to New Hampshire to first the the last week of September, but I'm going to be going. No, I, I was going to go to the first week of June, but I'm going to be going the last week of September instead. So we need to talk to people from up in that area, get together. Dan, I want you to come if you can. I know you're having a lot of difficulties right now. And I want to show you the wild ammunition, what I learned about it, because I learned a lot in a very short period of time. And that little dredge is going with me. Right on, right on. Unfortunately, my scenario, it might be a bit tough for me to try and make it with you guys because I've got the Alaska trip going on here. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be up there working with Alaska <laughs> mining. Alaska first, you can do it. He's going out there and go to work with Creed. He's like starving for trout. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd love to be able to go up if I could find the time, you know what I mean? But with my drag That's racing great. and now going up to Alaska to work for the work season during the warm season, I can't race up north because when I come back, these tracks up here are closed. I have to go south where they're open all year. So when yeah. I come back, I've got a jumbled schedule. I do have to make ri racing content, and I do have to do that as well. So I can't just let that slide. So I've got like four to five months in between working that I have to – go out and try to get as many races done and tuning and stuff done as I can while I'm here. I get it. Hey, hey. I work, I've, I've, been, I've been like 33 years in the steel mill where I work. We make the nuclear plates for the aircraft carriers and stuff like that. We're the only plant in the world that's licensed to build. I get six weeks vacation a year and I get a long weekend, four days off every three weeks. So, I mean, I've taken advantage of that over the last six or seven years. And I've traveled all Hello. over. And I'd love to go back to Arizona, but not the way it is right now. But, yeah, I understand. You have you have to do what you can do, and that's all you can do. There ain't much that's here just in the way it is. So, yeah, there, there ain't much. So, my intelligence that I have with race engines and – and, and building performance motors and stuff. There's nothing here based on my education and pay grade that I deserve with the experience I know with that kind of stuff. It just, there's nothing like that around here. I have to travel to make the kind of money that I can make. 
I can't do it here. Yeah, well, I have to travel. That would be that would be a major industry kind of thing in in Alaska. It will draw big crowds down around Pennsylvania, Virginia, and et cetera. Well, mostly Pennsylvania. I would say southeastern Pennsylvania. There's a lot of that. So Got Benzo Gold in the house. Yeah. Benzo's in. Benzo, Welcome, we, Benzo. Good to hear from you, man. Benzo, we we found you some black sand yesterday. <laughs> I got that Benzo gold sticker on that suitcase, man. I might try some of that gold one, the Peter there one of these days. Oh, Benzo always makes good stuff. Well, yes, uh, I, I want to thank I want to thank Wrench for Wrench Repairs and Prospecting for sending that sticker over. You sent a little gold fam and treasure fam sticker pack there. Nice. <laughs> I got I got the holographic here. one. I'm gonna have to get a sticker board together. I got the sticker. <laughs> Master Brando said he hit that holiday hole today. Lots of goodies. Oh man, that you can't you can't get the gold out of that hole. You can't get all the gold out of that hole. <laughs> we started that we old, me and him together. The next time we went down there, we had seven full size sluices down there, and everybody was getting awesome clean outs. I know we got, I know we probably got a half ounce of gold out of that hole. Nice. Where's that coming from down there? Is that glacial or is that from the native rock? You could, you, I have my own theory. You can talk to Benzo about it because we don't exactly agree. But I think there was a, a huge thermal event somewhere west of there. And that goes just all over the place down there. It's all over the place. But you're not allowed to dig in the bank. Millions and millions, and millions of years ago, that place was smashed by Africa. And all them mountains got driven out of the ground from seven miles deep. And that's where the gold's coming from. It's just I think, out I, think it was a thermal, I think it was a thermal event. I think it was a thermal event. I think it was a volcano. There was, was a lot of volcanoes because, once, once Africa hit us. <laughs> what does the gold look like under a jeweler's lure? Does it look like it's been dissolved out of rock? You could or get rough gold, 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 or you could get you could get um, plaster gold. Very obviously, plaster gold. There's there's not a lot of um I don't think there's a lot of um hard rock gold recently come out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of um plaster gold, smooth gold, but then there's also the 17 pound nugget and the 27 pound nugget that the guy didn't know what it was. It came out, it was black from a thermal event. And the guy used it for a doorstop for like eight or nine years before somebody said, let me buy that from you. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's got a lot of gold down there and big, big ass pieces, dude. Big pieces have been found down there in California or the Carolina area. What was that called? Morgan Creek or something? Was that kid's name that found it? Yeah, there was like I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I forget the name of the creek. I know, it was, I'm pretty sure it was associated with the Reed Gold Mine. It's like the first gold yes. rush in the eastern United States. Yes, that is correct. I did hear that as well. Yeah. That, there was like a 22 and a 23 pound nugget down down there, down there too, like a big old rock. It was a 17 pound one, and then later there was like a 20, 23 or 27 pound, something like yep, that. There was two big and, and this giant shit was fun. It was not rough. It was like obviously from a molten piece of gold. If you see yeah, pictures it of it, it was one molten piece of gold. Yeah, it was definitely melted. That's for sure. Smooth. Yeah, yeah. The, both pieces yeah. were. Yep, both of those were. They had those on. They had those displayed online too. You can find those online. Oh, you can find them. You can find pictures of them. They yep. were black when they when they were found. They were black when they were found. The outside of it was scorched.
Dan, is that Rock Bottom Creek stuff you're messing with? What's that, Bob? I was asking if that's Rock Bottom Creek stuff you're messing with. Yeah. I think my hole's empty, Lester. I'm not finding anything. <laughs> oh, boy. Know. Yeah, well, it was almost flooding the other day when we were out there. Right. All this rain's pushing stuff on top, guys. If you've got organics in the last flood event and you got floods happening over the top of it, man, that's what we've been having up here in Vermont. We get that last few floods in the beginning of this year. They happened and left some organic layer and then put silt and sand on top of it. And then the next event that came through, it ended up packing more material on top of that organic. So the first eight inches of dirt all over our, our uh, area that we, we dig, right in the pay streak on the inside of the line, eight inches under just the top material that's where all the big flakes are yeah yeah well, i don't know how well we're trying to get where we were digging but um johnny i got gold out of that with that dredge i'm pretty sure i have to go through it but i'm pretty sure i saw gold in that stuff <laughs> that's seven pounds of black Donna. sand i'll get to it someday Hello, Donna. <laughs> i'll get to it someday Texas Donna, how you doing, girl? Old girl lives here. <laughs> Donna. <laughs> Donna thinks that uh, Lester looks like Burl Ives. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brad and Culver. How you guys doing? <laughs> We're over here chit-chatting. These guys are all quiet, doing their thing. <laughs> oh, oh, the chat. Hey, come. Johnny's hey, corner. <laughs> Johnny. How are you two guys doing? <laughs> I'm groovy, man. It's good to hear, man. How you feeling? You've been healing up good? Yeah, I have my good days. I have my bad days. Good. Same as all of us. The The rapture tomorrow? The eclipse? Get over there and check out out JP's channel. He's going live, man. He's going to be right there in the middle of it. There's just one place I don't don't want to be. So one place I don't, don't want to be. <laughs> one place I don't want to be is Niagara Falls. I don't want to be in Niagara Falls. Especially so, if you hear planes over there. The other That's day, a target rich an, environment, gentlemen. The other day we had an earthquake over here. If you guys didn't know. We had a about four point seven, yeah. Four point eight magnitude is what I seen online. And it, so back in the early 2000s, we had a small three something magnitude earthquake that they believe st- that was originated underneath 32nd or 33rd Ave in New York City. And there's a supposedly inactive fault line that goes through the subway station down there. Now, New Jersey is where the source of this uh this magnitude and this earthquake that's where they believe it came from was right next door in new jersey so that's that same exact fault line that went off in the early 2000s and literally a dude like i'm sitting all the way in rutland vermont and our whole entire house shook for 30 seconds dude like pretty pretty solid shaking i haven't had a house shake like that up here at all so, can i get one like, we've had We've had go, go, four, four point whatever right down here in southeastern PA. The fault line goes right down through the Appalachians. Yeah, it does. And yes, we have and it's had not it. inactive. There's, a, fuck, there's a bunch of fault lines here. Yeah, she's sleeping, bud. She's not. She's not inactive, bud. It's sleeping. There's a, bunch of fault lines. there's a bunch of fault lines here from when Africa slammed back into our continent. Yeah. And they're all on the other side of the Appalachian Mountains, and that's where they came from. Is when that, when Africa came back together with us and hit us, so you know, millions and millions of years ago. So there's all these old active faults. They're yep, gonna yep. move also, every once in a while. <laughs> also, think of this though. So the eclipse that we have now is a what they call a total eclipse, which means the moon's direct the moon's orbit around the Earth right now. It is not centered in between, like the Earth is not centered in that moon's path. It's off-centered. 
the last eclipse that we had was what they call an annual eclipse. There was actually a ring of fire showing on that eclipse because it was at its furthest point away from Earth on its orbital spin. This time, it's the closest. Now, three days prior to this eclipse, we're having earthquakes right in the path of totality. And the, the moon is as close as it is, is to the earth right now when this happens. Now, think of this. Three days prior to this eclipse, we had an earthquake right near the path of totality. And we have gravity from the moon. That's why we have high and low tides. Now, the sun has gravity, and that's why it keeps us close to the sun now if you have both of these planetary objects lined up on one side of the earth and the moon is at its closest to earth the gravitational pull from the moon and the sun is acting in the same direction and the moon's gravitational pull right now is at its strongest because it's the closest to earth so right now we've got a very upset earth stretching out due to these things happening right now and that's why we're seeing a lot of earthquakes in areas we don't normally see and stuff it's pulling earth around you know well let me uh, just say that i'm glad that it's not nibiru number one and number two i want to say that niagara falls is the last place of place i want to be for this because it's a target rich environment <laughs> damn right lester <laughs> I just got to say. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the rapture. Not going to Niagara Falls or Washington, D.C. And you got the FBI and, and Homeland Security saying that there's going to be terror, terror threats tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Monday. yeah. We got a state of emergency. State of emergency. National Guard being, being activated in some of these states. <laughs> you know, well, there's I also just, another reason why things are geologically active there in the Northeast mm -hmm. is that there is compression that happened when the glaciers were over the top of that area. Yep. And since receding, there's called a rebound effect. Mm -hmm. And that's also part of the reason why things load and unload, especially with a lot of rain or lack thereof when it gets drier it gets lighter and will expand up yep it's wet it won't sink down so that's also another reason why that fault isn't necessarily asleep just right it's just not moving right at the time yeah it's like that's what i try to explain to people Earth and, is not solid fluid. what you, what you if you take a if you take a water balloon and you yeah. want to do a, a slow shot of it, throw it up and spin it, it stretches at the equator. Same thing as the Earth. You know what I mean? If it gets tipped in a different direction, it moves a little bit, or you have other factors that pull on Earth's shape, it will start to readjust its shape, and the plates will let go and stuff and start to move a little bit. And I mean, there's a lot of tectonic activity in the past year two years it's been like a lot you know it's just natural things Man. that the earth is going through you might you might think that vermont with the mountains and everything the appalachians are still pretty pretty good shape up there they're pretty high and everything but your bedrock and everything is much closer to the surface yes so yes. those mountains that's have been why you off. would feel oh you would feel it quicker and more strongly than most of us would down here we had a 4.3 hey we had a 4.3 the other day when you had a 4.7 or they did in new york and it didn't even hardly knock anything down but so people wouldn't notice you know we've had them before sand. yeah you must be on some sand but, or something that's what i'm saying if you're sitting on close to bedrock and there's an earthquake you're going to feel it oh yeah over here that you dude we could so my grow lamp that's hanging over the pineapple plant, I seen that shaking, and then I seen the walls actually doing this ripple mud. This whole oh house, two-story house, was doing this like a bowl of jello and a freaking upside down <laughs> cake. You flipped it upside down, took the container off it on a table with a wiggly leg, and you wiggled the table, and the bowl of jello goes like, yeah, that's what the house was doing, bud. 
Okay. You can you can check the date on this, but there was one right around the time I got married, which is um 1980. 1980, 1980, 81, there was a big one down here. And we had almost almost a five. And I mean I actually went out into the street because I didn't know if there was an explosion or something, you know. I thought there was some kind of like explosion. We have munis mun munitions factories nearby and stuff. Yeah. That wasn't what it that was. was my was initial an thought. Something's wrong or an explosion. But then when I felt it continued after a half a second and I'm feeling it go like this still, and I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, that's not that's not an explosion. That's an earthquake. That's got to be your hunting pay jar. Yep. I see the bee. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Is that A3? Yep. 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 I'm gonna have to get me a good luck honeybee one or bumblebee one of these days here. Yeah, oh, this, is a, my gold this, trap. this is a this is a copper bar. It says A3 in it. You stamp it. Hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs> a little ingot. You mean one of these, Jeremy? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make some of them with that damn seven seven ounces of flower gold I have. Oh wow! Look at this. If I melt my gold down, I'm not giving it away. <laughs> I don't give it away, and I don't sell what I dig out of the ground, I'll be bro. Stashing it for a hard day because it could come. Gold's always going to hold value, always. Mm -hmm. Always. That's why they took all the gold eagles and double eagles back, bud, and gave you guys all the freaking paper receipts. What are they? Yeah, Brad? I know. What's that? Oh, that's called money. <laughs> what are they, what are they, Brad? <laughs> what do you got there? I don't know what it is. That looks like a piece of well, it doesn't look cubic style, so hey, I don't think it's gold. Mm, all kind of nice garments in there and stuff. 4.4 4 magnitude near Seattle today. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was yeah, jo Joseph Knowlton. That was 1028 a.m. Sorry, Culver. Oh, that is rich. Cascadia fault line has been pretty active lately. There's been a lot of tremors. Anthony, mm -hmm. what's up, brother? Yeah, Mother Earth is not happy right now. I can say that. I why. Yeah, I know. I think it's honestly just a longer cycle that fucking we've known about. So, like, look, this eclipse that we know about now that's going to happen tomorrow has been known for 2,000 years. It's been known for a long time. This has been long known knowledge. And, like, humans are just finding out that, like, there's a total, civilizations knew there's about a total it. eclipse. I was watching a show today. There's a total eclipse every 18 months somewhere in the world. Right, right. But not a total eclipse like what we have. That's about 26 point something years. It's like a little opal or something. Uh, that looks like a piece of amethyst. Could be amethyst, too. Yeah, it's got purple in it. It's clear purple. Yep. Amethyst is actually crystal. It is actually quartz. Pretty cool looking piece of rock there. I didn't know that. I thought that was pretty cool. And this is actually starts out as quartz. Mixed up with something that makes it purple. I don't know what makes it purple. We're sending the cool stuff, man. We'll put this stuff on my, my little rock collection table over there. That looks like a layer of a vein right there. Something. Well, that looks glassy, volcanic glassy. That's oh. cool looking. Well, listen, folks. I'm going to have to get off here because my phone's about to die. But besides that, uh, if anybody gets in contact with Hobo Rob, have him get on my damn channel, get my email, <laughs> send me send me an email, because I'm going to give him two weeks, and if he don't get a hold of me, we're going to have to do it again. Hmm. So, <laughs> come on, y'all. And don't go to Falls, whatever you do, <laughs> or Washington, D.C., and God bless you all. And I love you. And I can't wait to share my next adventure with you. So I'll see you all. 
the next time Pastor, I, when, I when, see when you. When we go, when we going back and dig. <laughs> He's out. He's out. He's out of here. I'll give him a call. Well, Lester, it was nice meeting you, sir. Glad Lester's to awesome, man. He's, He's so fun to go out with. <laughs> yeah, you guys look like you're having a good time down there. Yeah. Who just said the more... freaking, who said Kool-Aid makes the rock purple? <laughs> <laughs> Stony Creek. Stony Creek. <laughs> Oh man! Oh yeah! I must have missed that. Cool, cool, cool! makes it purple. He said. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Texas Donna said, "Bye, Barrel." <laughs> yeah, we had so much fun yesterday. Got that dredge out there for him. He was happy, man. Boy, I was happy to see that darn Green Mountain Gold Trap out there. Make Big me smile. smile on his oh, face. Put a smile on my face to see the Green Mountain Gold Trap out there. Yeah, dude, it filled up with black sand quick there. Oh, yeah. I can't wait, man. I got, got that recirculating system I've been working on. So you guys will be seeing that reviewed and field tested in Alaska. Bunch, bunch of little rocks and gems there, man. Pretty cool. Got a little seashell there. <laughs> Pretty neat. I would like to know what this stuff is, though. That does look like pyrite, but it looks like crushed it's, up pieces of it. Maybe. It's like whatever it is. It's real wiry, and it might be copper. So like maybe some copper scraps or something. Well, I do know that native copper can come in chunks in a rock. This is pretty cool. I wonder if this is maybe it, man. maybe you can polish that off a little bit. That looks like volcanic glass of some sort. Yeah, I was thinking a big garnet, but now now the more I look at it, it looks like a piece of glass. Looks like melted silica. It's got some hose rock in it though. See? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, it looks like glass. You should maybe take a little. A, a, a wire brush or something, or maybe a polish wheel with one of those pieces you think is copper, and see if it shines up. You got a nice some pieces of gold there. Well, that's got some rusty colored gold. Got some right back. To go through. Need a coffee refill here. Gas tank's empty. Cat says it looks like slag glass. JT, my brother, what's up? Hope everything's well. Hope you got your truck fixed and you're out there getting some of that gold. JT's got a pretty cool channel. He gets out there and gets after it. Eighteen awesome people in the house. Really appreciate you guys coming in. Where's Wrench at, man? I just don't come around no more. I don't know. Hope everything's well. I know his back's been bothering him a little bit. Yeah, I was also reading back, getting back to that eclipse that uh, there's supposed to be a common associated with that eclipse. Something they call the Devil's Comet, and it causes earthquakes for some reason. I don't know if I believe that, but um, pretty neat, you know, just throwing it out there. It's supposed to go right along the, the path of the, the eclipse. Mary said she grounded wrench. <laughs> well, unground them, Mary. I miss them. <laughs> Untie him, let him out of your basement. That's right. Did you time him out, Mary? <laughs> uh, they was over there the other night, and uh, they kept timing out. Dennis, it was funny. <laughs> right, right, Stoney? <laughs> let's, face, let's face it, we're all going to be dead tomorrow. That's why I prospected today. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, God. We had an eclipse a year ago. We made it through it, so I believe you guys will be all right. All right. <laughs> I got some pretty cool pictures off of that last eclipse. I put a pair of those. That was 20, 2017, right? Nice. That was 2017, right? Uh, no, we had one day or two. Made it through a couple of them now. <laughs> oh, they're saying this is supposed to be the big daddy. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to all the pure bloods out there. <laughs> if we one could, of them. If we could, if we could make it through COVID without the shot, without the poke, you guys can make it through this eclipse. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> it's kind of funny how they're trying to pay people for uh, blood donations that they don't have a COVID vaccine now. Ain't that kind of weird? They're, ask, they're asking them if they have it. Yeah, dude. That's like, crazy. Hey. <laughs> like, that's kind of fishy, right? <laughs> $10,000 a shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is good for you. No, I'm talking about uh, for kids. $10,000 a shot. <laughs> that's what I'm charging. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I can't, man. I just heard that we're all going to not be here tomorrow, and I figured I'd just give a shout-out to the Pure Blood guys out there. Love you guys. We'll make it. <laughs> we'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird how, like, all the Pure Bloods make it through the eclipse? <laughs> oh, what was in that shot, guys? <laughs> 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 oh dude damn I wish I didn't get the shot had to because of Uncle Sam mm -hmm. man that's some bullshit well I don't mean to sound I just negative but I have to disagree I, with that I just, everybody has a choice I, I just didn't get it because I'm a conspiracy theorist Oh yeah, I know. You want to know why? Crazy. You want to know why I didn't get it? Because right after, right after they started giving that shot out, I was getting information from overseas where they were doing autopsies on people who got the shot, and they were pulling like nine-inch-long rubber band things out of their capillaries in their lungs. And I just had a heart attack for clogged veins, and I said to my wife, "I'm not getting that shot. I already got clogged veins," and that's why I didn't get it. That's the God's own truth. Mm. I don't know. I don't mean to sound negative, you know, but I mean, it does it does throw you into a tough scenario where people had to provide for their families. But at the end of the day, if people are more worried about money instead of their families. Then you're put in a scenario where you're going to do things you don't want to do because you're trying to take your family with money. There's other ways I, to I, make money. I was happy my company didn't force me to get a shot. They wanted I'm, they, they I'm glad suggested you did it. it. They suggested it. And I said, no, thanks. <laughs> oh no, I would have I would have quit. I would have quit. He's he was like, dang, you gotta get the shot. I'm like, no, I don't. He's like, Well, it's a law. I said, A no. law. I said I said it's a suggestion, brother. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. No, thank you. And I and I said, I'm not gonna get it. And he's like, All right. I said, Well look, you can lay me off until this is over, dude. It's only gonna be a couple weeks. Hey, here it's been three years. <laughs> See, look at Stony Creek. That's the same scenario right there. They put people in a scenario where they think, or they feel, not they think, they feel, they get they get trapped in a scenario where they have to have their, their livelihood to stay alive, but yet they're put in a scenario where th that's all they know how, because that's all they've been taught, is to listen yeah, and do as they're told. That sucks, Sonny, if they put you in that position. That does. But, like, I'm, I'm that person, like, I don't care who you are, dude. Like, if you're pushing me to do something that I am not okay with, like, dude, I will fight you to the death, and you best kick my ass and make sure I don't get up. Because right. I will walk out, I will go broke, I will go hungry. If I have my decision made, I don't care who had. You could have a gun to all my right, head. All right, all right. Pull the trigger. 
because it's not like I'm not going to get forced to do something that I would not know. Throw me in jail. Go for it. I'm not scared of jail. I've been to prison. So, you know what I mean? You want to throw me in jail because I didn't take a shot? Okay, by all means, go for it, bud. I remember, you know, I'm, I'm in construction and I was building offices and stuff like that. People were like proudly posting their vaccination cards on their on their office doors and shit. And I'm like, yeah, are you serious, man? Yeah, it was yeah. like, you know what it and reminded me When we walked me of? around and we walked around, we were walking through the offices going to our job sites. They would shut their doors like it was crazy, man. Yeah. You yeah. know what it reminds me of is historical photos of my kin from Ireland coming over to the United States. It reminded me of when they had famine and they were running from that, trying to get jobs in the United States. And they got brought over here or they came over here and they had signs. All, like if you were Irish, they don't want nothing to do with you. You're a piece of trash. You're dirt. You're scum. You're a virus. Like stay away from us. We don't want no Irish hands. Like that's exactly how it felt during COVID. Like, I mean, I, I had... I had breathing issues, right? So I, I couldn't wear a mask. Like, it was really hard for me to breathe with a mask on. You know, even when I'm back in the shop, you know, with the grinding the metal and stuff like that, I, I got to wear that respirator. And it's tough for me to breathe. I walked into a convenience store, and this is no bullshit. I walked into a convenience store, and a dude starts going like this. Like, he was, he was throwing his hands up in the air saying, where's your mask at? Like, he was just a customer. And I'm like, get away from me, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally, and uh, out of my so he started saying a bunch of shit, man, and um, we got out front and we got into an argument, and then we ended up in a fist fight <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't wearing a mask. <laughs> well, and you know, it's not the person that started it either, so you can't really be too mad at the person. Think of the people who wrote that person's personality and the way they think. Okay, the media and everything yeah. they grew up thinking and thinking's true and believing and perceiving as reality like they were brought up that way dude it's not all their fault you know what i mean like you could take a child and raise them in a foster home and not tell them that those are their real parents and they're not going to understand if you never okay. leave them on and give them that information they'll never know right it was funny though like you know another time i was well, working night shift. I, I, I was building a jaguar dealership right at the time this all went down and um I was going to get my coffee at like one o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And I get in a fight at one Wawa, the, pl the places where you, uh, our convenience stores are called Wawa. So I went there one Wawa and got in a fight. And I, the next night I was like, ah, I don't want to go here. You know what I mean? I want to find to go find another one. And it was like, you know, three miles down the road. So I go three miles down the road and I go into that Wawa and I walk in there and there's a line of people in there. Some people have masks on, some people don't. And, um, there was a guy standing there talking to the lady at the, at the cash register. She worked there, right? And he was talking to her for like 10 minutes. And there's like 30 people in line at 1 o'clock in the morning, which was weird, you know? And um, so the guy walks back into the back room of the Wawa, comes back out with his Wawa apron on and his hat. And he comes right up to me and he says, sir, you need to wear a mask. And I looked at him and I'm like... Dude, you were just standing here for 10 minutes talking to your friend at the cash register without a mask on, right? I said, I have a breathing problem. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't wear a mask, you know what I mean? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, what's wrong with you? I said, excuse me? And this guy was walking with a limp. He was clearly handicapped. And he was an older gentleman, you know? Well, so the manager comes out. Other than just right. physically, man. Right. So the manager comes out and, and pulls him away from, from me and says, I'm sorry. So I said, sir, I'd wear a mask, but I, I, I have a breathing problem. You know what I mean? So I'm not wearing one. So I got my coffee and I went out and sat in my truck. So I'm sitting in there and I'm like, this guy's handicapped. And I can't believe you just said that to me. And I got kind of an attitude. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you can't tell. But anyway, I'm sitting there. I put my coffee down. I get out of the truck. I go back in the store and I walk up to him. I said, sir, I said, you're clearly handicapped. Right. And he says, yeah. I said, do you know what HIPAA laws are? And he says, yeah. I said, well, you just violated mine by asking me what's wrong with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then the manager came over again. And I just wanted to make my point. You know, I, I wasn't going to do nothing to the guy or nothing. But it was just crazy, man. The whole thing, the way everybody was acting. 
And uh, it's a really sad time for this country, to be honest with you. Yep. The program. <laughs> I thought it was great. I go to the store and start coughing. Everybody ran away. I got the whole place to yeah. myself. <laughs> sorry, I got the can of virus. I, I kept saying, I kept telling everybody when I was coughing, I was like, sorry, I got the can of virus. <laughs> the can of virus. <laughs> well, you know, hey, look, dude, it's Vermont. You know what I mean? Like, dude, shut up. I'm coughing. Yeah, I smoke a lot of weed, bro. Shut up. <laughs> so looking what, dude? Like, oh my God, I'm coughing. Yeah, I smoke hella weed, bro. <laughs> yeah, but so my my boss, like after we had that discussion about the uh, you know wear mask being a law, he put me on a night shift for like four months. <laughs> so I was like, cool. And then right after that, I had I had the heart attack. So yeah. he said, "What are you doing this weekend?" I said, "I'm going to DC." <laughs> and I called I called him up. I called him up Sunday night and said, "I can't come to work tomorrow." He's like, "Why?" I said, "Because I had a heart attack on Saturday." <laughs> He's like, you all right? I said, they say I'm all right. I got two cents in my heart, but I'm all right. <laughs> so I was out of work for three months. Oh, dude, I, I basically, so the, the one company I was working with, <clears throat> they they shut down just, just when the COVID stuff started. So I was out of work. And then. I got a fast food job during all the restrictions and stuff because that was basically the only thing that you could find a job that was open was like their essentials bullshit. And yeah. uh, like I had, resort, yeah, I had a resort to working jobs that I'd never go to, you know what I mean? And it sucked because we didn't get compensated for none of that shit. Like they gave us like an extra dollar per hour that we worked during certain a period of time, like more than halfway through the covid pandemic and stuff and it was like dude come on man like just kiss our butts a little more to try and keep us employed here because we're all going to leave anyways like they don't care about workers no more around here yeah it was it was a whole weird scenario man i remember i was building a doctor's office when they finally locked down and um they actually wrote us letters that we can go out and work. Everybody else would have to stay in the house. They gave yeah. us letters so that we can drive around. I mean, yeah, nobody ever pulled us over or anything, but it was great, dude. Like, no traffic at all. I would drive to work in the morning and see maybe one car, and I was driving 40 minutes away, you know? <laughs> and I was like, this is awesome, man. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I was looking at, at the city. Of, I was driving through the city of Philadelphia one day, and it was – completely silent. I was like, wow, man. <laughs> you know? Crazy, crazy stuff. And I remember the, the lady who, who was running the uh, the doctor's office. It was for Abington Jefferson. And um, she was like, yeah, we need this place opened up right away, man. We need it open. We need it open. And they were rushing us to get it done. You know what I mean? So we hurried up and got it done. And seven months later, that place was still sitting there empty. Nobody ever used it. No doctors ever moved in or nothing. They didn't need it. They didn't need it. <laughs> you know, so I got bored and I was driving around on the way home from work, stopping at hospitals to see if they were filled and driving behind them to see if there was um, um, freezer trucks back there for bodies, like they were saying. And uh, there was nothing, man. It, the hospitals were empty. I was going in there doing YouTube videos. Look at this. This hospital's empty, man. <laughs> and then I would drive around the back. And you know, look for trucks. He said, "There's no, there's no more trucks here, man, except for the one that's usually there. There's usually one there, you know what I mean? And uh, well, at least some hospitals had them outside. Their morgues were outside. <coughs> it was funny, man. It was like absolutely insane that they were going to. And then, and then all the videos of the nurses were, were coming out from TikTok. All the nurses so so busy at the hospitals with all these people, but yet they were doing dance videos. <laughs> Yeah, that's just some communist type crap, to be honest with you. Restricting people's movements and giving them permission to move around. Like, dude, that's, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't too happy with that kind of shit. No, that's not good. Like, and they another thing, too. Down, and we What's had a uh, sheriff's department blocking off the highway. And I had to go through a checkpoint at the 15 County line. To go into work, and I have my uh, oh sacrificial employee card, and they asked me for my yeah. vaccination card. And I said, My medical records are none of your business. 
Mm -hmm. And it was illegal to ask. Great. They asked me for it, and I told them the same thing, and they couldn't do nothing about it. Yeah. And they can't ask you, though. Crazy, man. I went to work and did the whole thing. We had to stand tight cars outside before we brought them in. We used an ozone generator, stuck it in the car for a couple hours, so it's still full of ozone, kill off any viruses. And, well, everybody got sick but me. Let's just live in bubbles. (laughs) That's crazy, man. I don't know. From from me being in New York and having a past like mine, you know what I mean? Like, it was kind of weird about being in COVID because, like, everybody started thinking masks were cool and shit. Like, back when we used to mask up as kids, bud, we weren't playing and, like, we were the bad kids for masking up. You know what I mean, dude? Like, and then you go into this COVID thing and all these kids are running around with masks on their face like they're some kind of gangster. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Like, what the hell's going on here? It was the weirdest feeling, bro. I know, going to a bank with a mask on. <laughs> yeah, up. dude, it's like back in the day, I was scorned for that, dude. Like, don't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the neighborhood bars, you couldn't even go in with, with a mask on. They wouldn't allow you. <laughs> yeah, dude, back <laughs> now, now, now we'd mask up, but dude, it was so weird. <laughs> now everybody's like, put your mask on. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> Cover my face so you don't know who I am? Well, that sounds safe. <laughs> I'm just glad that dumb shit's over with, man. Oh, they wouldn't have kept it going for long, bud. People got sick of it real quick. I tried to order a sandwich at a shop, right? At lunchtime one day. I tried to order a sandwich. And uh, they were like, you can't order. I said, I can't order a sandwich and go stand outside because I don't have a mask on. I said, this is bullshit. And this, like, 19-year-old kid says, hey, we've been doing this for, like, a year now. Where you been? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I went to say something to him, and then I said, no, nah, I'm not going to say anything. I'll go outside. <laughs> oh, Justin, you know what I mean? puffing his chest, feeling like he has a little bit of control. Nah, I mean, not, not that he could have puffed his chest against me because I would have whooped his ass. <laughs> well, that's, that's what but, a lot of those mask wearers but, would do, though, bud. Well, no, no. He would be in the car the, by the, themselves with a mask on. The, the thing that got me the most was how programmed he was, man. I'm like, yeah. Jesus Christ. It's I said, sickening. I said, I said, society's in trouble with people like this kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I basically told him, mind your own business, kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> well, kids of that generation never got smacked for getting their nose into the conversation or something that doesn't involve them. So that's where people feel like they have the right to speak up and stuff like that because they don't understand respect nobody's taught them respect and respect does require getting smacked up for doing something wrong right i mean that's just the way it is when it comes to a boy raising a boy or a young man absolutely discipline training respect training is an absolute must you have to If they don't understand the repercussions of pain from a bad issue versus no repercussions from something, they're just going to, they're going to take it and run with it, bud. It's like letting your dog do one bad thing and letting them get away with it for a little. And then when they get a little older and it starts to get out of hand, you try to tell them no. It's just, it don't work like that, bud. Yeah. When I was a kid, my dad, you know, I stepped out of line when I was a kid. My dad was back in, right? Right in the mouth. You know, especially if we're out in public, you know what I'm saying? And I embarrassed him. And uh, I, never, I never disrespected anybody because of that. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. you don't, you don't, you keep your opinion to yourself. You don't, you don't go telling everybody what's on your mind. Are you stupid? He said to me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a good night, Stony so, Creek Spark Chaser. Stony, I'll see you, brother. It's Stony. Good seeing you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Yep, the only difference between that, the only difference between that generation, where we got backhanded, and the, the next couple generations, you know, when I hit twenty years old, it was nineteen eighty-eight. So, the next generations after that, all the fathers weren't there anymore. They weren't in the household to 
to make you respect somebody, you know what I mean? So they just, they just, and also, they just did what they wanted. And also they started pushing the, oh, don't abuse your kid. You can't spank your child bit up north. Yeah. Like that, that definitely puts a, a, a fear in the parents to discipline their children. You know what I'm saying? Like it mm-hmm. is okay to discipline your children. Abusing and disciplining are two different extremes, but that's a different. <clears throat> if you're leaving bruises on your kid, if you're close to it, smacking them upside the freaking face and stuff, leaving marks on their faces, that's not okay. But discipline, putting a hand on their ass is not illegal, bud. To, to discipline your child because they're doing something wrong or disrespectful or dangerous and you've warned them not to and they go and do it anyways. You have to reprimand your child, especially young boys. It's a different thing than raising a little girl, you know. Little girls, they'll, they'll cry when an issue happens and just sit there. A, a boy, they're trying to figure out what to get done to make the scenario better. <laughs> Boys are looking for what push, what button they can push and get away with, and yep. what button they can't push and get away with. <laughs> yep, yep. yep. That was, Let them get that away with me. a little. It's over. <laughs> yep. It's not. It's not. So your children should have, especially your boys, they should have a healthy fear of letting their parents down or upsetting their parents. A healthy fear from their parents. You know what I mean. And, and that's instilled in a, at a very, very young age. Like the, So, like, get this, over in Africa, there's a tribe over in Africa that teaches their children trust by swinging their children around by their feet when they're infants until the child no longer screams when their parent does it. The child finally <laughs> understands that their parent is not going to hurt them and they are okay and that they're just scared and nothing's going to happen. I mean, think about it. You're teaching and instilling in the child the difference between fear and trust at a very young age. I mean, it sounds taboo because it's not allowed in our country. You know what I mean? But when you think about it, you're actually teaching the child at a very young age to trust your parent. I don't know. I must have been dropped on my head. Oh, I was. (laughs) No, I'm just playing, dude. I, I, I remember oh, getting my head smacked off a door frame. Hold, hold on, brother. Hold on. Stop and stop. stop. How you doing, lady? She's over there from Australia. Got some more Aussie all these friends. Yeah, man. Yeah. What's up, man? How you doing, Fluff? Haven't seen you in a while. Good stuff. Another earthquake just hit Japan a couple minutes ago. They had a 7.5 a couple, weeks, a couple days ago. That's what I'm saying. This this lineup of the plant or the earth and the moon, it's got a it's got a double gravity pull on one side of earth right now. It's freaking stretching it in one direction. It ain't happy it's right pretty now. Pretty cool stuff. 7.4 in Taiwan. Jeez. Another one? They That's just got whacked one. the other day. That's over seven. That was India. No, it was Taiwan. And- Oh, they got hit in Taiwan too. Yeah, the other yeah. day, <laughs> drop buildings, dude. Jeez, right no in the tsunami. middle of like one of the one of the major cities. No tsunami warnings as of yet. Crazy. It's gonna get all biblical tomorrow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Godzilla is awake now. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, Godzilla. Yeah, he's going to start spraying fire on people. Tokyo. <laughs> right? <laughs> Keep him over there. Start getting aqua lung in my, or uh, Jethro Toll in my head. Is that who yeah. does Godzilla, right? To Japs, yeah. Japanese. And Jethro Toll? Uh, no, no, it's somebody else. Go, no, go, 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 go. Um, Oh, crap. Aqualung is um, David Bowie, isn't it? That, no, Aqualung is Jethro Toll. No, you're right. I think, I, man, I think Godzilla is Jethro Toll, too, but I may be wrong.
Godzilla. Godzilla X Kong. No, not that Godzilla song. Keeps showing me Eminem crap. <laughs> Chills with Milton said Godzilla is my dog. Oh, mate. it's the it's the Blue Oyster Cult, bro. That's that's who I thought it was. Yeah, I I couldn't think of their name now. Sorry. Yep, Blue Oyster Cult guys. Yeah, well, Japan is on the western side of the Ring of Fire. That is why it gets hit so bad. Alaska gets hit just as much, if not more. Alaska's due for a big one, man. Yeah, yeah. There's actually more volcanoes in Alaska than over in Japan, if I remember correctly. I think there's they got really, there. really high volcanoes that go in the to some of the bays and stuff, and that landslides cause major tsunamis over yeah, there. Yeah, right on Ketchikan Bay, that whole bottom arch of Alaska is the northeastern part of the Ring of Fire. And then it goes yeah. right down past Culver and Zaxxon down there through California on the San Andreas Fault Line and goes down into Mexico. And then it scoots back out into the ocean again. Yep, that is the Ring of Fire, dubbed the Ring of Fire. I'm going right up by it. I'll get to experience more earthquakes throughout the year. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about any of that until I wanted to know how gold was made. And then I learned about all that stuff, all the volcano rings, the Ring of Fire, fault lines, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Rift zones, and I never knew anything about any of that until I wanted to know how gold was made. Geology puts you in a whole bunch of learning curves, but yeah, a whole bunch. I never thought geology would be a thing with me. I'm a racing racing guy, you know what I mean? Motor engines guy. I never thought my hobby would turn into doing videos and actually going out and finding gold, you know? Learning geology, tectonics, and the the shift of poles and stuff like everything that you can think of that's geology and stuff. It's cool, man. You learn all sorts of new stuff. Look at that. I nice. Really cool. Cool. Yeah, I wanted to know where gold was everywhere. So I was looking all over for that kind of stuff, you know? Geologic events. You know, you got you got gold seven, fourteen, and twenty-one miles from all volcanoes that are gold producing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what I did when uh, I first started was looked for inactive fault lines because there's not a lot of gold knowledge over here. So I wanted to find stuff that wasn't found. So I actually researched inactive fault lines that were known in Vermont, and I actually hiked out in the mountains and found them and tested those areas so that's what i started with tectonic fault lines and stuff i i had to figure out where that stuff was because i knew that's where the gold would come out i started with yeah, a pile thousand there's still quite a bit of earthquakes around that area it's actually a very active fault mm -hmm. up here on there, gold mining with yeah, it still moves not a lot though the one in the Adirondacks next door over where I grew up, there's an inactive fault line. They say it's inactive, but it actually moves like one inch every year or something like that. It doesn't move much, but it does move. Like I said, the earth is definitely not solid. It, it's fluid. Yep. It moves. Then, then you got to worry about when it gets caught and it can't move that inch here. That's when yeah, you worry about the earthquakes. <laughs> That's when we get when it, our, when it gets caught and it can't move and it's and it's putting all that pressure against the mm -hmm. other plate and when it slips, boom! That's that's when you got to worry. <laughs> that's what that's what San Andreas does. Matter of fact, Joseph, you're over there by on the other side of the lake, aren't you? Because if Kelly, you're over, how are you? 
there's a fault line that you can see at the Adirondack Community College. Right out front, you can see part of the tectonic plate hanging up out of the ground out front on their property. And that's actually part wow. of the fault line through there. Grandma Kelly's in the house. Oh, he's willing. Mom. All right, all right. Thank you for stopping by, Kelly. The big one on the West Coast that's coming, watch it happen tomorrow and set off Yellowstone and Rainier. <laughs> that's going to be a bad, bad couple of days if that happens, bro. <laughs> be out back prospecting. What's going on, brother? Give a, let me give B out back a wrench. Dude, out, in, out there in Yellowstone, it's been swelling pretty a lot. Like, it's swelling. <laughs> it's raising. It it does every year and then goes back down. There's years where it moves up and moves down. But it it's not a lot. Like, it's it's like it eight inches a, a year. Yeah, no, it moved a lot this year. They've been monitoring it. It's been moving it's more than ever. It has ever. a very awesome system to it to cool itself down. That's why all those geysers and stuff are there. Yeah, they out. Yeah. That makes if me think there's out. a lot, a lot of gold there. A lot of gold because of all that that thermal activity, man. Why do you think it's a national forest? All the gold producing areas that are important that would be really good gold producing areas are in national forest, bud, or they're locked up. That it wouldn't be that good of a spot to be digging. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I hit the wrong vein, bud. <laughs> you get a surprise off of that. I was watching yeah, but all, that, all, that thermal, all that thermal activity and, and the water that gets introduced into that volcano and, and gets, you know, turned to steam when it clashes with that magma and moves yeah. up back into the ground that's cracking and, and, you know, freezing and lowering it cracks. That's where the gold is formed, man. That's where you get your quartz veins from. And if it cools off for a while and has long enough to cool down, It'll form gold there. All your all your metals come from there. All your minerals. Rainier would them. definitely go off, Anthony. Nice, Sonny. You want to pull you up see, Brad uh, real quick, PA? Let him show his pan off. Brad, oh, it's not cleaned up. It's just uh, it's just what I sluiced off the first spot. That's all cheddar up there. Yeah. Heck yeah! Look at that. Yeah, that's all cheddar. I just cleaned off the first mat. Nice. What's what you're you're running a dredge or a high banker? Uh, I was just running off this little uh recirculating oh. oh that's beautiful. <laughs> So the doctor still hasn't called me back on my results. I don't know what's up with that clown. <laughs> hey, there he is. What's happening? Who? There, Mr. Um, Ranch. Ranch. Oh, my God. Ranch is here. <laughs> Hi, Ranch. What's that, what's that buddy? None. Uh, what about your sooner group is eating? Uh, Hi, Ranch. I miss you. I miss you, buddy. <laughs> we see Mary untied you. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, having everybody? Mary, you, th you timed them back in. It's about time. It's only been like an hour and a half. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Better late than never, I guess, eh? I, mean, so I said, where's Ranch? Ain't seen Ranch. She's, she's like, I timed him out. <laughs> Oh, she grounded you. That's what she did. She grounded you, she said. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. I, I didn't find no gold in the PA stuff that I had, but I definitely saw some, some gold in Lester's, in Lester's uh, dredge, John. Oh, I can imagine. There's a couple specs, you know? Oh, God, yeah. And that thing works so good. On that, if he was hitting on that uh, clay like I was, he definitely got some. He, he was actually on the other side in the deeper part where the bedrock was, cleaning out all oh. the cracks. He's been want he's been wanting to clean out for a long time. But that dredge worked really good, man. Once you got, once we got it running, might have a bad foot valve on it. It's not opening all the time uh, unless it's in like direct flow. So Brad was saying it might be bad. 
Well, that's why you got to test it. That's what we got it out there for. Oh, wrench. The crash box that I'm designing on that CAD, I found out that Creed from Alaska Nine Finger Mining, his CO2 laser can cut us out manufactured gaskets for him with the adhesive, probably on the back. We're going to try with the adhesive to cut them, but I can have him mass manufacture whole entire boxes of these seals and send them right to you. So then that, you know, if you're still interested in any of that, because yeah, I, I, no. I put the bug in Mr. and the other guy's ear too. Yep. Good, good. So his ear perked up just a tiny bit. He's thinking about it. So sounds pretty cool. But if we can get those seals mass produced, that would be super cool. He, he, it's super simple seal. I just want a one piece seal for those. Yeah. Just put, stick them right on the back and then uh, fix. Yeah, you won't have to glue or anything because the ones I found, they've got like a waterproof adhesive already on the back it's of it. Yeah, adhesive, yeah. If, if his machine, his CO2 laser machine can cut those out and not have any issues with it, I know it'll cut the seal itself, but I don't know if it'll cut the adhesive or the paper that the backing on it. So I have to try and see if those work but if those work i'll be able to ship you a whole box of those things so then that way they're ready for you to go and you don't have to do anything but put a seal on it put the hinges in a little baggie and send them sounds good man get that done I, I do want to go over the, the dimensions a bit more and make things a little more user-friendly for people. Maybe a shutter gate yeah. on the front of it to keep water flow flat. That would be a yeah. second part. Do you Have you made flat gate hinge type parts yet that have tabs on the end that click in? With this? I'd use pre-manufactured uh, pre uh, metal ones. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll look into it, but I think I can. It would be a two part deal. You'd only have to just pop that thing in the little holes. I could design the grooves mm -hmm. and the pop in tabs for it in, in the software. Yeah, I mean, you could easily, in that case, could just use a rivet with a uh, washer on the backside. I was just going to have it self tap or like a, like a part that clicks in. There's no hardware needed. Yeah, well, I mean, to hold that hardware to it. What do you mean? Oh, I was going to have the holes already after the first prototype we do and I try out on the field. I'm going to purposely try to break it. <laughs> well, yeah. That's okay. a definite. You'd want to do yeah, that. It's getting field tested up in Alaska. I'll be calling you up to have you wing that up on your free time for me. Eh, and sling that up to me so then that way I can do a field test oh, up no. there, see if it works. And uh, I, I also have to have that printed and sent to me to figure out where I want to have the pre-manufactured or pre-printed hardware holes for the little latches. So then that way there's no drilling, there's no cracking the print or anything. Oh, yeah. It's a pre-made hole, perfect size for the hardware to just screw in there and not have to damage anything. They don't have to line anything up. They can just put the hinge on there, screw it on and be done with it. That way you don't have to do anything but just put the seal, put the crash box and the parts in a box and ship it out. There's no manufacturing other than you printing and cleaning the print up. That's it. Nice little smile from the honey pack. Oh, that's some nice pieces. Cool. Adrian Skywater, Hunter Bay. Got your chance to get a, a chance to get one of these. Get one. Package got delivered today. Let's see, I'll show you. And this is what the bottom of it looked like. Oh. What, what is that now? Brad knows what I'm talking about. Oh, that sucks. Was it from Dylan? What? Who was that from? It was in the box. Oh. It was from Dylan. Ooh. Yep. 
Bernardo like Rams in the house. What's up, Rob? It's like it got dropped in the water. Lucky you oh didn't lose it, that. It looks like it was run over. But, but it uh, was still in there, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'll take all the luck on this guy. You've been lucky. Gives you a little look at it. Hey. Yeah, that's that one you won. Yeah. Nice He's one. won like three different nuggets in the last That's couple. a nice nug right there, dude. Score. Yep. Good for you. Thanks, Mr. Dillon over at Miller Prospecting. That's a that's a necklace kind of piece, you know what I mean? That's a good piece. Good baddies. Joseph, what's been happening? The Outback, Rob, Mary. That idea. Yeah. What you doing over there, Rob? Rob, you know, Brad? Oh, um, I uh, big Texas dynamite bag. We got you blown up watching it. Are you watching me? <laughs> Maddie's in the house. What's up, Maddie? Grandma Kelly's still here. Wow. Yeah, I had this uh had the package thrown on my table and all I saw was that rip in the bottom like that and I was like, no. <laughs> I was just so depressed and I picked it up and I'm like, wait a minute, it got a little weight to it. That's awesome that it was in there. Oh yeah. He says he's gonna switch over to a thicker bag, like a he got a heavier some. bag for for sending out, you know, stuff with square corners. That, like was, that was from Dylan. What's that? That was from Dylan. Yep. Nice. On Tuesday night. Grandma Kelly says she's editing videos. That's why she's still up. <laughs> he thought he just Pretty liked Grandma Kelly. I hate editing. Hey, Terry. Is that what you said? That was one of them three pound bags, Brad? Yeah. The uh, dynamite, <laughs> the dynamite red one. Very cool. Yeah, I won it in February. Ding. Sorry about that, guys. You're all good. Jeez, shush. They know you're on a live, Remy, that's all. Yeah, exactly, right? Mary, Brad, Mary said you're playing in your closet. <laughs> Always. Nice. Look at that. Now that's a shine. Shine. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. ATC said, Stogie time, be right back. George, I'll be a big time prospecting for that. Nice. Oh, yeah. Getting on some. He's got another rodeo going for this month, and I believe it's a five gram nugget. Be out back. Thanks for stopping in, brother. Have a great night. I think it's a big ass nugget and a bunch of other prizes. I hear you. Be big ass back. nugget is always good. It's always good. So, Brother James, what you got going on? I got a box of big Texas dirt, unsearched, straight out of the, the claim. I found a couple nice. flakes in it, nothing crazy. But I'm a rich man, probably 10 pounds 
or so of that material, and it's all mud. Nice. You can see my water's just jacked. Yeah. Chocolate milk. <laughs> I know uh, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you're going through the same thing right now, aren't you? <laughs> I got some boxes on my way, too. Let's see here. Nice. Yep, yep. You got to do two of them to get to you. You're going to have to get your sluice set up for that, John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know me. I like cannon. Right. That's, I figured this big box Sunday nights to pan it out Sunday at a time, right? Yep. The link yeah, is, I got a the bunch link of... is... Go ahead, PA. Sorry. I'm sorry, John. I, I interrupted. I apologize. No, no. It's your channel, brother. I was just going to say the link's been in the top if anybody wants to come up. Hey, Jackson. What's happening, brother? It would be very cool to see what you get out of it, James. I got uh, two grams of flower gold on its way. I asked the guy for the smallest of the small. Tell me whatever you got. This one from Juno. How big is that nugget, John? 2.33. Nice. And I had no idea that I even won it until I got all kinds of texts and uh, Facebook Messenger <laughs> notices. I was like, get in there, John, you won. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's he over at Swifties, yeah, was... too. He, he yep. was there at Miller's wedding, and he wins it, and he's over at Swifties. <laughs> yep. I'm working on the truck today a little bit. This, a little that. How's that coming along there, Josh? Eh, I don't know. I should hope we find out tomorrow when they pull the head. That's your um, Duramax. Yep. Duramax, right? Yes, sir. You think it'll be ready by mid May? Uh, we'll find out. Only one way. Right. Thank you, be out there. All I know is I definitely have to put a built transmission in it. Otherwise, I'm stuck at like 70 miles an hour. Can't go over 70. I think I would just worry about getting the dang thing driving before you worry about the transmission. <laughs> well, it should only be the head gasket and one bad injector. I'm hoping it's nothing else when I open it up. Yeah, but it's a diesel. You could have fouled all your injectors or who knows, you know. They only got 10,000 miles on them, so I'm not worried about the rest of them. It's just that one. That's like brand new then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I would. I would, Terry Carey. <laughs> Oh, you saying uh, a micro coffee strainer? <laughs> a lot of clay balls in there. Not really. I think this is out of his new spot. Um, it's pretty gravelly all the way through. Yeah, there's uh, that uh, red bag I did. It wasn't hardly anything for uh, there. Was, it looked like there was, you know, a lot of gravels. But when I got it all down, there wasn't crap for gravels. It was all uh, clay balls. Get 
where'd that go? Yeah, we like fun. Like, this is what I ordered. Let's see here. Did you order that? Or? I just invited you to it. Lower gold. Nice. Two grams of it. <laughs> Flower gold. <laughs> Floaters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I said, I asked for the smallest of the small. See you, Maddie. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming up. For com coming out tonight. Maddie and Johnny's Corner Channel. There, there are some great peeps. Got to get over and check them out if you haven't. Oh, that's who that is. Oh, I should have put two and two together. Take care, Maddie. <laughs> Grandma Kelly, how's that new house you got going? You got the heater hooked up and all that? Everything's good? I'm be right back. I need a beverage. Oh, that's right. You're going with me. You can hear me. Yeah. We're in your ear. Yep. Seen, uh, I seen earlier that uh, Grandma Kelly was saying it's seven hundred thousand dollars for a house in the city where she was, and it was two hundred thousand out in in the where she got her house now. Ooh, that's not a bad price. <laughs> and she has heat and running water. It's amazing. <laughs> that's not a bad price. Yeah, she's. I think she's out in the farmlands now. From from right. The roof was done last week. Gutters are coming tomorrow. Awesome. Get it done. You don't have to worry about it for 20 years. Doggone gold. What's up, brother? Three grams. Hello, all, and happy Sunday. Just got home from a prospecting mission. Did to go. Did you find any shiny, Green. brother? Green. I remember, uh, Green. 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 That's what I told you. She has a 1930 farmhouse on an acre of land. Oh. Cool. Doggone dog walked away with 0.3 of a gram. It's always a good day out on the creek when you find some gold. Well, it's always it's an awesome day at the creek when you find gold. Yeah. I know that for a fact. <laughs> Even rain soap. <laughs> Joseph Joseph Nolan says, "Not my night. Pizza was a fail. Glasses broke. Parts fell behind the bed. Still got laundry to hang, preventing me from playing gold prospector." <laughs> oh. Kelly said, "Today they brought me a bunch of beef. That's always cool." I had Lester mm -hmm. took me out took me out to the Amish markets. I got. Oh, you I did get out there. I spent two hundred and twenty bucks for meat and got like fifty meals. After I broke it down and cut it all up and all that. 50 meals for 200 bucks. Can you believe that? That is outrageous. <laughs> I can believe it. Yeah, man. I cut it all up myself, you know. That's how it should be. Yeah, man. I bought a big, giant pork one, man. It must have been... 20 inches or, or, or bigger, 24 inches maybe. And I cut up a bunch of center cut pork chops out of it, man. Awesome. <laughs> Bought a big um, big piece of chuck steak, made like two chuck roasts, and cut up some, uh, some steaks out of it. Really nice, man. Ground beef at my supermarket, it's like eight bucks a pound. Out there, it was three ninety nine a pound, a ten pound bag, man. I made like, <coughs> you know, uh, nine or ten bags of meat for like, you know, one pound hamburger packs. 
saved so much money going out there. <laughs> Nineteen acres, eighty thousand. That's pretty. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, doggone says not bad for my area. Point three. Glad you had some fun out there, bro. Hope it's still not frozen. Last couple of videos you did out there, it was ice, man, everywhere. <laughs> Play them zombies. Dutchy, what's going on, what's man? Up, what's up? What's up, Doug and Gold? <laughs> Joseph just wants to grab this dirty mess screen and say, F it. <laughs> Kill the zombies. Everybody getting tired? You got quiet? <laughs> Or did I just shut up? You just <laughs> shut up, Remy. <laughs> I shut up for a little bit. That's all. <laughs> Remy's here. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, shut up now. Remy's back. <laughs> no, I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, these guys fall asleep over here, or is it just my yap quieted for a while? <laughs> Donna says she got a house from the forties on an acre of land, and she was offered two hundred fifty thousand for it. It's not bad. We just got uh, one of our reports in today, and I spent, I paid 150 for mine. It's worth 355 now. Real estate values are ridiculous right now. Yeah, but real estate yeah. is a good thing to get. It always is going up in value. It's so I mean, hard to get into something that's low enough to get into right now, though. You got to go outskirts and develop your own piece. Mm -hmm. That's like you see you you see like 0.25 of an acre, 0.26 of an acre here in Rutland. Like it's expensive, dude. Like half an acre here in Rutland inside city zone, dude. That's an expensive plot. You know, <laughs> like you're paying a lot of money for this little teeny <laughs> little spit of ground. Like it's a lot of money, man. But you can get 13 acres on the outskirts for around 23,000. Yeah, it's but power, probably. Yeah, there's no development. There's no power. There's no sewage on the site. You have to literally start from scratch. I'm okay with starting from scratch. It's not the first place I've built a house on a piece of property that's got trees on it. And you got to clear everything. You know what I mean? I've done it before a few times. So. Now that's a good thing there, Joseph. Two miles from town, and he loves his location, and and his neighbors. That's that's an oddity. <laughs> yeah, having good neighbors, but that's a good right? thing. Mm -hmm. Well, at least, at least in the county. city. At least in the city, it's an oddity. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. County letters showed up here, and it's been less than a year, and the value of my place has already gone up seventeen thousand dollars. It's just inflation. Uh, yep. It'll go down. Again, again I, I bought my house. I bought my house ten years ago. It went up two hundred thousand dollars in value. That's why I'm saying the inflation pushed the price of your real estate up like crazy. 
But if you can purchase something at at your guys' time when you guys got it for a decent price, you guys scored. Yeah. Now, right now, trying to purchase that property right now, would you want to buy your property at what it's worth right now? Hell no. <laughs> exactly. Exactly my freaking point. Exactly. You would not want to buy I was, that. I was trying to talk Mrs. Patriot into moving to Montana with me, man, or, or Nebraska. We could have moved out to uh, to, to Nebraska or um, Wyoming, got a house on three acres of land for a buck twenty nine with a two car garage, right? Three bedroom house with a full basement, everything, right? For one hundred twenty nine thousand, we could have sold this and rolled out there, yeah. you know, and had money and, in your pocket, and had a hundred grand in our pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it'd be two hundred grand, you know. But your payroll <laughs> rates down there are lower, right? You ain't getting shit for a payroll down there. Like I haven't heard, I haven't heard seven dollars an hour since like I was a little kid, dude. I went down to Georgia, Alabama, and I heard that. I do, I about choked. I was like, these guys are living on seven dollars an hour minimum wage down here. Like what the hell? Nuts. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. Uh, if I would open my own business, is what I would do. You know. Mm-hmm. Plus, be trying to sell sluices and stuff like that. And, yeah, and it was kind Joseph. of a, a gold. It was kind of a gold bearing area. So, yeah. Joseph's in a good area, though. He's over, you know, not too close into the city area. And, and a lot of people in New York, out in the country areas, the 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 mountain and country areas, but they're they're all strapped, bud. <laughs> You're not going to want to piss your neighbor off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, believe me, New York's trying to take it all away. That's why I moved. You're not going to strip me my right of being able to have defense. Like, you're out your mind. I will move to another state if I don't like your law. Like, bye. Tell Colorado. You That's exactly anymore. what they want. Well, that's the thing. Go ahead, because you're just going to lose your state profits and stuff, because that's what New York's having happen, and they're flooding them out. But look at the issues they're getting now because of it. <laughs> People are pouring out of New York right now because of what yep. they did to Trump. Because of what they did to Trump. <laughs> Big they screwed themselves. Leaving. They stepped on their yep. own foot, bud. I'm glad I moved out of New York, bud. I, when I Mass when I Texas. came back up here from George or from Alabama, bud, when I come up and I didn't want to have to move back up, and I came back up, I was like, I'm not going back to New York. No matter where I go, I cannot go back to New York. F them. Man, I'm not going. Donna, back. Donna bought her house for forty five thousand in yeah. 2021. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, that's Texas. Their 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 real estate is less, your rent is less, but yet again, your payroll is you ain't getting crap for payroll down there. Two thousand first two thousand one. Yeah. But your dollar your dollar lasts further wow. down there. That's my first house was a road house in Philadelphia PA, right? Forty grand. Mm. And it was a row house, three bedroom. One Forty bag. grand. That ain't shit. Forty thousand. Yeah. yeah. My mortgage was four hundred bucks a month. <laughs> oh, she said two thousand one, bud. Yeah. Um, but still, that's back then. Uh, you you can get an apartment for for two eighty two eighty. Yeah, a look, month, right in then I mean? when we had the Y two K and real estate values had plummeted. Remember. Well, that that was when I was. I got my I got my apartment when I was sixteen years old. You know what I mean? They knew I was. They knew I was underage. They gave it to me anyway because I had a bad family life, and they knew me. And I worked for the dude. You know, he had three apartment buildings on the street that I lived in. Right, I was paying two fifty a month for my apartment. Right, I was working two jobs and looking after the three houses on my street. You know, so he started. He started just letting me live there for free. I didn't even have to pay him rent because I took care of the other three houses. Yeah, you're the building the grass. manager. Mow, mow the grass, cut, shovel the yeah. snow. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, took care before. of my, took care of minor repairs. If I had to call somebody in, I called him. He sent a, a service guy to fix the shit. You know, mm-hmm. and he let me live there for 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 free. I was doing air conditioning refrigerations as an appliance repair technician, like refrigerators, air conditioners, washers, dryers, microwaves, all that stuff. 
I could fix all them, and I worked at the pizza shop. Now, I was making three fifty a week at the air conditioning place, right? And at the pizza shop, I was making two eighty a week, working three nights a week. <laughs> so I was doing all right back then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For, for being a kid and I had no rent. So, you know, I put all, I saved all my money and bought that first house. <laughs> yeah. There, if, that, if you, that house buy, went, yeah, if, <laughs> if the, you can the buy <laughs> when real estate values have plummeted or if you can invest in business when everybody else is doing shitty and the economy is crapped out, if you can hold to it, during those tough times or invest during that tough time and hold through that tough time when everything starts to go back up and level out, then your real estate value or hey, your share, whatever it is, the value goes up. My bad idea. Bad idea that bad idea is taking off. Have a good night. Yeah. That, it's so tough to purchase property now because it's like just to buy construction, like to buy wood just for construction. The price is ridiculous now for stuff. Lumber's expense. Everything is ridiculously expensive. Inflation's <laughs> retarded. Yeah, man. I wish I was. Uh, I wish. I wish the prices were still from the eighties and and make as much as I do now. That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. So, I so mean, the I, numbers, I was doing well, six, 600 bucks a week went a long way back then. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You could have, so you guys at your generation during your age at my age. So 20, 30 years ago, you only had to make one fifth the money that our generation has to do to do it's, the it's same sad, thing man. that you guys did. You know, it's sad. That's, Five times more dollars for us to have the same thing that you guys did with one fifth the money. That's how much the stuff has increased in inflation and our payrolls hasn't went up. You guys had the inflation down here. So you were much closer to being able to make your dollar stretch than we are at this day and age. It's sickening. Mm -hmm. bud. Like I looked at the numbers and I was like, holy crap, you guys made a hundred grand back in the day. You guys are killing it. Today, a hundred grand. Well, you're you're not making it. You're you're just going paycheck like, to paycheck all the time. Fa fast food back then, right? It mm -hmm. was two eighty for a cheesesteak. Two dollars mm -hmm. and eighty cents for a cheesesteak. You want a cheesesteak now? It costs like twelve bucks, dude. It's like yeah. insane. Dude, chicken <laughs> broth. Dollars. Chicken broth to make soup the other day. I go to get a thing of pre-made chicken broth, bro. Little container of it. 10 effing dollars for a little teeny container of chicken broth. What the hell? That's crazy. $10 for the freaking creamer container. That's half of a <laughs> gallon, basically. And you're paying 10 freaking dollars for a thing of creamer. Wow. That's out of it. So I, I made chicken soup today. But I am, I was grossed out supremely last time we went out grocery shopping because it's like we had six items in the car and it was a hundred and thirty dollars six yep. items yep we pay like, the highest price in the world for our food the highest right. price in the world for our food at grocery stores that's why i made that video me saying me and the boys when the freaking cart full of groceries cost a fucking thousand dollars i'm out here busting my ass I'm trying to make you. a big dollar i have to because we're we're hard hard for it right now in, in the countries in the countries that aren't part of this western civilization fucking money scheme that they got going on their groceries are a, a quarter of what we have yeah, to pay yeah you know what i mean and it's instead quality of being stuff, four, right instead of being 400 for food to feed your family, it's a hundred. It's insane, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just seen a pretty interesting thing today that uh, Zimbabwe is changing all their money over to gold standard. Yeah, there's a few countries doing that. They are doing and, and it's a gold to turn in their money to trade it out so that it can be backed by gold, and that's how they're going to run their economy. They're that's, running. Away that's the, the way to go. That's the way to go. That's that's why I started thinking when I was like, when COVID started, I said, "What's the best thing to do?" Well, all gone, all gone. Just said, 
doggone just said Washington State now saying that eighty thousand a year is low middle class. It's ridiculous. Eighty thousand oh, dollars a year. Eighty thousand dollars a year. You should be able to pretty much do whatever you want. You know, go on vacations, buy yeah, yourself a camper, all yep. that shit for yep. eighty grand a year. Yep. You know, and you shouldn't have to work a ton of overtime for that either. You should be able to have no, family. Straight eight, straight eight. Yep, you should be able to do forty and have the rest of your time to yourself. You should be I'm able to have your time to family when you're not working. Taxes are being sent to everywhere but the U.S. We don't use our tax money here to take care of American problems. We send it it's to other countries. It's a big old conspiracy. So we're 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 full <laughs> of it. We're delusional. Remember, they 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 can uh, fortify their borders and all everything else on our dollar, but yet we can't have nothing here. <laughs> I'm glad I grew up poor, bud, because when this shit hits the fan, I'm going to be fine. Everybody else who's used to money is going to be running around with their head chopped off, not knowing how to take care of themselves and how to provide without any money. They're not going to know what the hell to do, dude. And I'm going to hit the freaking mountains, dude. I'm hitting the hills. Bye. Me too, brother. I'm out. Later. I'll fight and duke it out <laughs> while I'm up here watching the cities yep. burn. You know what I mean? That's why I, I, I went from living by the cities to the, to the outskirts. The, the mountains are are an hour and a half from me now, you know? And then if it gets too bad, I'm headed out to Colorado and I'm hooking up with James Colbert. Get as far <laughs> as you can and get as high as you can. That's all I can say is get yep. as high as you can, bud. Get away from them. Safest thing you can do is get away from the bullshit and let them tear themselves apart. That's it. Get, get yourself a good running old vehicle that doesn't use all that electronics. You ain't even got to worry about an EMP. <laughs> well, you do with coil vehicles that have no computers on them. You still any electronics on that. If you have a chipboard or diodes or anything like that, it'll short short out all that crap. That's you're, why you're I said, still that's why I said good old car, old fashioned car, dude. A good well, old no, car. I'm saying I'm saying it has electronics in your in your uh your um. God darn it! What Culver? I'm having a brain start fart. Again? Starter cylinder. Your ignition coil. Yeah, your starter coil, your your coil in the uh, ignition solenoids that make the starter go off, those can get fried out by an EMP blast. But they, they're easier to get running because they're they mechanical. They have to have power to them, right? Battle. They got to be hooked up. They got to be hooked up to the battery, right, for in order for it to short out. The electromagnetic no, pulse really get, stuff out. get stuff to act as its own Faraday cage because the metal skeleton of a car will actually protect itself. If you ground it, just so you know, right? if you take a ground strap and hook it to where, if you know it's going to happen, you hook a ground strap to the exco, the steel of your car, the current will flow over it, not through it. So it won't get damaged, even if it has a computer. Right. Well, that's why. So a lot of people don't understand why there's a ground strap on their hood. That's for that reason, too. So yep. Chevy's GM products are known to have a little ground wire that goes from the hood to the firewall. And what that does is helps insulate the electronics underneath the hood from any electromagnetic fields. Uh, any EMF issues that you run across with satellites or towers or anything like that that comes across the hood of your vehicle, it grounds out and shells around your vehicle so your engine doesn't have go on the fritz. You know what I mean? If that strap is off there, you could have issues. It's just an extra Mary, precaution for grounding out. Mary, there, there are horse and buggies here in PA. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> some honest honest people not too far from here. here. We'll be fine, dude. <laughs> Heck yeah, those guys have it figured out, man. I give those guys props. Amish people are freaking tough, dude. Like they, they, they do it up. Like real Amish, like we got over here, they ain't using no power. They utilize water or horsepower. You know what I mean? And they do it, bud. Wood peg everything, sawmill their own crap, and they're up there with no ladders on the freaking, you know, like maybe like branch ladders sometimes you see. But they're, you know, dude, they're kicking ass, dude, with wooden hammers. Uh, I was on I was on the way home yesterday from, from the creek with Lester, and uh, I saw these two Amish kids out there with weed whackers. I stopped and rolled down the window. I said, yo, man, what are you using weed whackers for? He says, we don't live in the Stone Age anymore. 
But, uh, but right some, next some to him in the field, right next to him in their field was a team of four horses pulling a freaking lawnmower and cutting all the grass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, we we used to stop and get their baked goods because the wife of the farmer wow. at that one Amish family they have this little like wooden cabin they put up and made a little like shop on the front of their property and they have all like baked goods that that woman does all during the early early morning yeah. dude and puts out at six o'clock every morning in that place and leaves the door open for the public to come in and trust them to pay in the box and take what they're getting you know they just. They trust the public to do the right thing. They don't even have to man the thing. But out there in the country, everybody respects the Amish people. They pay them. They they don't steal from them. It's it's decent because it's on the outskirts, away from the city crap. Yeah, we got a honey shack out here. I can go and pick up whatever honey I want. You just leave the money there. Mm -hmm. You can get you a five. That's really cool. If you really want it. Mm -hmm. That is really cool, man. Heck yeah. Rich the Matrix Battle Warrior sent me, sent me honey, dude. It is so good. It's the best honey I ever had. She said, <laughs> Donna, Texas Donna said something about Amish white country gravy. That sounds good. We have the Mennonites out here. They're a pretty cool group. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, like, the yeah, Amish even, people over here, they me, do it up. They make, like, cinnamon me, buns, pies of all sorts, but they grow their veggies and stuff and their fruits and shit in their own gardens, dude. Like, they've grown that during the year to make that crap. Yeah, we go to, we go to Lancaster. they got Amish farms and everything out there. Even on the way to the creek with Lester uh, out there at Peter's Creek, every, every other farm has a stand right out in front of the freaking – house you know what i mean you just pull up and you put money in a box and you take take a basket of fruit or veggies or whatever they got going on that week you know mm -hmm. and uh you just throw money in the box like you know it's five bucks for a basket of this you throw five bucks in there put it yeah. in the truck and the amish aren't they, killing they you on the price out. either yeah they don't even come out and, and say anything you know what i mean no and we, um if you want egg, you want eggs you have, you have to go up to the house if you want eggs you have to go up to the house they get you the eggs i guess they keep them somewhere where they stay good and they're you can they last up to two weeks because they don't wash the, the film off the eggs mm -hmm. so they last up to two weeks you know yeah yeah you can put them in the door in the fridge remember how the fridges came with the egg spots you can leave, them, you can leave them out you can leave them out on your counter for two weeks mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. still use them yeah mm -hmm. uh, my eggs that i get for my chickens you can leave them out for a month yeah you got chickens they don't go, they don't go bad yeah i got right now and i got 12 more in the garage i'm growing right now is but there scratch it, yard got a roof on it what's that does you is there like scratch yard area their chicken coop it's got a roof on their outside area yeah they got a, they got a coop that i can put them in its fence but i just let them run around the yard and they eat all the bugs and spiders and stuff so i ain't gotta pay for weed mitigation or anything like that because the chickens eat all the weeds and keep the yard mode in the back and any scraps that i get well, I, I, right? I was only asking if they had a covered area over where they hang out and where they poop because you'd be able to make gunpowder with the potassium nitrate that's in their poop so you gotta like have it covered so it don't get rained out there so they just, they shit right on my deck. <laughs> well, it's it's actually so the potassium nitrate is in their crap, and yeah. actually some some oh, like kingdoms See used to actually some kingdoms actually used to um, demand their payment, and they would go through in their livestock bins, and they would take the top layer of the the dirt that's been eroding. But you can't use they can't be out in the yeah. open because the water makes the potassium nitrate which is water soluble run out of the crap so it has to be a covered chicken coop if you let them poop in that and give it like a month or so of them building up the crap that they're hanging out on top of the potassium nitrate doesn't get washed out so you can take the crap scoop it out put it into a bucket put water in it let it soak 
and then strain the water out of it because the water is going to have the potassium nitrate in it. It's water soluble. But then you just put it in a big crock pot and you boil the water off and you're left with potassium nitrate that you can mix with your charcoal, which is the, the potassium, potassium nitrate is actually the oxidizer. And then you've got your charcoal, which is your carbon. So you Plus mix you those it, together. Use and, it for fertilizer um, too, to, for your garden. You can use it for yep. fertilizer. Yep. John R., what's up, brother? Hey, that's good. You got chickens, dude. That's a very, very um, valuable Donna. thing. Right yeah, Donna, you can leave fresh farm eggs out. You cannot do that with eggs that have been bleached or washed. They have a plume on them that protects the egg. And yeah, Remy, their their chicken coop. They have an indoor part that I could collect their crap from. But uh, they like sitting right by the door and watching me, you know. <laughs> they, they like watching their human. They and, know uh, you're their caretaker. <laughs> I got to clean the deck off every week. Or it's just horrible. But they're all super friendly. You can pick them up and pet them and all that stuff. They're pet chickens. They all got names, you know. So it would be hard to eat one if we had to. <laughs> no problem. No problem, Donna. We're, we all got useless information floating around our heads. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, a Actually, retarded, not I'm a retarded nerd. <laughs> Just be warned. <laughs> I'm a retarded nerd. <laughs> Link's pinned at the top if anybody wants to come up. More than welcome. Adrian, what's up, brother? Yeah, that's, that's cool you got chickens. I personally, when I buy eggs... I only get organic free range that are non bleached. I would rather buy chicken fresh eggs or go out and pick them from their chicken coops myself. I'd rather have them that day. If they were laid that day, boom, right to the pan, dude. Like, we got like free, free we free get farms. fresh eggs in the morning. It's nice. We got like three farms up, up the way and uh, about three miles from the house. And I drove by the other day and uh, just saw the guy put. A sign out there, farm fresh eggs. I was like, nice. You know what I mean? So next time you need, need eggs, I'm gonna go up and see him, see uh, see how much he's charging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Donna man, said those farm Donna fresh said eggs. They're so much better tasting, bro. They taste better. Yeah, <laughs> Donna just said I'm a retired nerd. <laughs> one of our eggs, and they just look pale and disgusting. Like, yeah, there's, there's no no comparison. Yeah, and the, and the taste. So those those shells are porous. When they're bleaching yeah. that crap and washing them, like don't think that it hasn't been soaked up into the yolk. Like you haven't done the science project mm. at school where you had the glass of water, you had the glass of salt water, and then you had the glass of freaking sugar water, and you put an egg without its shell in there. You find out it actually sucks stuff up or fills up. Like it'll the salt brine water actually makes the egg cell squeeze up sucks the water out of it but you've got a regular water with the egg in there and it'll actually bloat right up the cell walls are permeable just like the shell is it's just calcium like it's going to soak right do. through it yeah i didn't know about it so i went to north carolina in my boy's house and uh they had turkey eggs on on the, like you know the eight the, the 18 egg racks Mm -hmm. sitting on the counter and we're sitting there for like three days and i was down there for three four days and i'm like uh your eggs are sitting on the counter there and they're like she's like yeah <laughs> and i said i said well aren't you gonna put them in the refrigerator <laughs> she says no <laughs> i'm like they learned how long you let them, yeah how long do you let them sit there she's like three or four weeks <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know fine. what i mean yeah and uh, i'm like and she said oh by the way they're turkey eggs and I'm like, oh, so the next morning they were getting ready to make eggs. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to eat these. He's like, dude, eat the egg. My buddy, you know, and he's like, eat the, eat the effing egg. He said, I took a bite. I was like, oh, man, this is so good. <laughs> it's turkey egg, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. Hey, Donna, Donna said she's going to be right back. The world is ending tomorrow. So she's going to get another beer and schnapp shot. <laughs> <laughs> Live it up, Donna. <laughs> drink one for me because I don't drink like that. So. You can have mine. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a shot tomorrow, right before the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> yep. 
I want to be sober headed if shit hits the fan, dude. <laughs> some some good some good old peanut butter whiskey. Shit starts going south. I'm jumping in the truck and going to Culver's, man. <laughs> I got a rifle for you. <laughs> See, that's the you thing want, is that people want, will put eggs in the fridge. Cost of bullets. <laughs> yeah, people will put eggs in the fridge so they don't hatch. I mean, yes and no. So if you have an intro, if you introduce a rooster around hens and you don't let him hang in with the hens, you won't have fertilized eggs. You know what I mean? Like they'll yeah. lay eggs that are not fertilized. So there is no live embryo in there. So you just have to have a rooster <laughs> around to get the eggs, to get them to want to produce eggs. If you have a bunch of hens that don't have a rooster around, they are not going to want to produce as many eggs and production will go down. <laughs> Joseph Dalton said, I prefer to only drink at work, but sometimes I make exceptions. Oh, he said he was joking. <laughs> you got me. You got me, bud. All right, never mind. I'm going to shut up. We'll go back to quiet time. We'll go back to quiet time. Okay, guys? Uh. Safety okay, meeting. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Brent, you all right over there? Oh, yeah. He's, he's playing his video game, looks like. <laughs> Killing zombies? Yep. Yep. Still Far Cry? Dreams. No. This is Dead Island 2. <laughs> it is safety meeting time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wasn't kidding, buddy. <sighs> I hear the bubbling. <laughs> oh, sorry. I try not to. I don't care about that. That's why I end up. No matter to me. Muting it sometimes. I'm over here gagging like a moron. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's some good shit. <coughs> I can't breathe, but that's awesome stuff, man. <laughs> right, Terry Curry. I need another one. <laughs> chicken or the egg? Neither. It was the rooster. <laughs> yeah, I bought chickens when I was younger to raise. They turned out to be like 100 roosters and two hens. Oh man, I fucking killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, who was that? Who said that? Yeah, we got a rooster last year, and uh, I couldn't bring him in the house. <laughs> yeah, they get a bit mean. <laughs> well, no, it wasn't mean. I was gonna eat him. <laughs> oh, but you got big old drumsticks. Out everybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Dalton said, when I pulled out the furniture to find my glasses, I found a blunt that I forgot I made. <laughs> <laughs> Score. It's 420 somewhere. That used to be me, man. Blunt City. But oh, I can't God. breathe I, now. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I used to do seven, six of them a day, 3.5 G in each. Like I, I used to do a whole eighth and one at a time and hand one to my buddies and then get and take one for myself and no, I can't do that. It's too expensive these days, and uh, I'd like to do things without actually having to sit around a pipe all day long to get stuff done. I don't. I don't miss the three hundred bucks a week that it costs me to smoke that shit. I don't. Miss oh that. heck, no! <laughs> I don't even touch that no more. Yeah, a half ounce mm -hmm. would last me literally four days back then. It ain't the day to my head. Easy. <laughs> Every well, I was like clockwork. Every every three and a half days, go get a half. Every three and a half days, go get a half. <laughs> yeah. I'm, no, I'm I'm actually I over here legally at the dispensary, I got a hookup for sixty dollars an ounce for some dank. So, not a bad deal at all. Cannot complain. <laughs> A gas station here in Rutland. You know, the dispensary here called the gas station. They got the plug, man. $60 for an ounce. Yeah, I remember driving by that place. 
Hey, but dude, they got a good hookup, man. I know you don't smoke. I'm just saying, yeah, that place there, they call it the gas station. And I, t I can tell you right now, every time that I've been to that dispensary, every time I have not been disappointed. And I've tried stuff that I normally wouldn't try from them. And it has done the trick, man. And it's a decent price, but this isn't a normal price for the ounces. This was just like some leftover stuff they were trying to get off. So, you know, yeah. you get a good deal at 60 an ounce. That's cheap. Yeah, that's the best deal. Hey, you, what's up, brother? The dispensary, and they got the shit on clearance, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. Expiring. Yeah, well, Greg they don't want to have it expire. Yeah, they don't want it to go bad. Dry yeah, out. when they sell it to you, I bought, you know, the oh, gummies for five bucks instead of a hundred bucks. Bought the tinctures. Uh five or ten bucks instead of a hundred bucks and you know, I was like way better. Craig yeah. you diver said grow better shit at home. <laughs> well I can't. I'm going up to Alaska or the next batch would have already been done started two months ago, bud. <laughs> I I just took the tent down and all the lights and everything yesterday. Last last batch was harvested about a month ago. So there was no room to start and go to Alaska. And then when I come home, I've got five months of racing, basically, before I have to go back to Alaska to go back up for work season, second year, if it works out. And um, there's no time for me to grow. You know, I just, I love growing, too, because I am able to control the quality of my stuff, and I know exactly what's in it. I have an acute sniffer. If you if you rub the stalk a little bit on a seedling and you have a really good sniffer, like you literally rub your fingers on a juvenile stalk like this, it'll stress the plant and put a little bit of terpenes on your finger. If you have an acute sniffer and go like this after you've done that, you can smell the notes of the terpenes prior to it even going through its vegetative stage. And I have an acute sniffer. So if it doesn't hit the sniffer test when it's this big, it goes in the trash. I don't even bother with it. If it doesn't I, buy one of TV, I don't want it. I was going to buy one of them grow machines there, like 2700 bucks, And um, it turned the lights on and off for you. It had like a, it looked like an old, back in the day, remember the old stereo cabinets that you used to have mm -hmm. for all your decks? It looked yep. like one of them. And it had a black, a black screen on it that you can, hit the button and it would open up like you could see through it and uh you could see how the plants were doing you know it would tell you when to trim them prune them it would, it would feed them for you with all the plant food and it would water it and it was all like computerized man it was like 2700 bucks i was telling my wife i'm buying one i'm buying one she's like no you're not you better not and then i ended up quitting smoking pot so it would have been a waste of money <laughs> somebody would have got it somebody would have got it real cheap <laughs> yeah there's a there are smart tents now that you yeah. can put a camera in there and you can have the whole system on your Wi-Fi at home. You can be all the way on the other side of the United or the world. Uh, as long as you've got Wi-Fi plug in or internet access and you can, you can access the Wi-Fi system from home and plug right into your system, just like your Roku cameras, plug right into yeah. that. You can change everything and monitor everything you need right from your screen out on the road traveling. But even your watering systems, your dripper systems, you, everything's all on your cell phone. And you can visibly yeah. see on the screen what's going on. Like that is sick because I was looking at it and it's about 1300 to 1500 for a Vivo Sun smart tent and for a five by five. I mean, a five by five, I can put two plants in it and I run out of room. Like, that's not big enough. Like, I need a room for how much, like, I can make a plant grow. I need a small room to grow my legal limit because having a five by five and putting two in it, I run out of room and I'm like, I've got a flower early because I just run out of square, <laughs> square footage, dude. I don't have enough. Oh, running around driving, I can't grow no more. It's all in the storage now. I'll think about maybe maybe doing it later on, but I'm not too worried about it. I've got racing that I want to get done. That and some gold mine. 
I still got my black can do can number 10. Can do. Didn't he do like 13 of those? He had three different runs, I think. 10 each oh. time. Oh, okay. The one, this one on Guido's. We're talking about the Japanese maple, Donna. Can do number five, can. Pull, pull tap. Nice. <laughs> I just did mine the other day. I'm running out of I'm running out of pay dirt. I usually have ten or twenty on in in hand. Look at look at Wrench hanging out with all those dirt bags over there. You should talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got a room full of dirt bags over there, man. What the hell? He put that shelf up for his his dirt bags, and he got a bunch of knickknacks up there now. I think. <laughs> He, the other shelf he tried putting up, it ran out of room real quick. <laughs> Look at it now. There he is. Look, look at all that stuff. He's up got this there. giant. Oh, he's got pay dirt up there. <laughs> pay dirt. You, you need more room, brother. You need another shelf. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Maybe not, too. Not even kidding, dude. He really does need another shelf, bro. Oh. <laughs> Another one, maybe two. Jeez. Have you took a tally of how many bags you got up there? No. No? Jeez. Let's let's hang on. Don't count. Let's maybe maybe we could have people in the chats and whatnot take numbers and stuff. We can go back and look at it. Do a giveaway. Sounds like a cool idea. Like everybody pick a number of how many bags do we think is on that shelf right there? 44. Hashtag and the number in the chats. Hashtag 44. I grow enough through the summertime to last till next harvest. Between me and my wife, we might do a half ounce per month. 12 super skunk plants does the trick. Man, uh, I, I, I would do a half ounce in three and a half days by myself. <laughs> That's why I quit that shit. <laughs> Plus, I couldn't breathe. <sighs> if you have really potent stuff, you only have to take one puff, and it lasts a long it time. It, it was, it was, I think it was the blunts making me smoke that much. I, I just... I had to have a blunt, you know what I mean? <laughs> Getting it from other places that didn't have the quality control that I wanted made it hard to stay medicated. Because if you didn't John, have I'm going to say 67 bags. What, that's just on the shelf right now? Yeah, just on all the shelf. That, just on the all shelf. Together, all together. The bags you I don't got. know how six, we're going to do 67. this. Are, are we going to... Is somebody going to write these numbers down? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We're just guessing. <laughs> we already got people hitting the hashtag, hitting the numbers in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Grandma Kelly and always... Joseph dropped the numbers. Terry did, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look what I started, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All things said sixty nine. <laughs> All things country hashtag sixty nine. I'm saying he's got sixty seven. Go. At, at least. Oh my god, they're they're definitely freaking throwing the numbers. Brad said forty four. <laughs> Whoever's the closest, without going over, gets a congratulations. Mary says all your painters are mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mary said, bring them to Freedom Fest. Ranch. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Mary, you're gonna, pan your, you're, gonna, you're gonna pan your your pay dirts out of Freedom Fest, right, Mary? So we can show you. Yes, she's going to. I'm putting a number in the chats because everybody else is. I think. Well, this is just what I have alone for. Miller prospecting bags that I haven't taken anything out of. Well, no, just on the shelf. Just on the shelf. What are you saying? No, How many just on the shelf. 
I think there's 30 bags up there. Grandma Kelly says 55. Y'all can just uh, lay it down. I got it at 44. I got it at 67. I don't know what you're talking about. All things country said hashtag 420. <laughs> Your vote don't count if it ain't put in before he dropped the number. Your vote don't count. <laughs> AU says 27. Joseph Milton says 39. Oh, Donna undercut me at 23. Girl, AU Diver undercut me at 27. <laughs> I've taken a few down lately, so. Did you count them? Yeah. You already know? Yeah. I know what's up there. That's just up on that bringing, show. Mary's bringing a Benzo, a 403, and a caution jar. Whoa. Mary said 40. 32. All right. It doesn't what, count, what do Mary. No, has, no hashtag. What do you think? One more or two more minutes at 11.03? Get your numbers. Get your Grandma, numbers. Grandma Kelly said, woohoo, ranch is in his pee gates. <laughs> yeah, you got 35. You got 35 bags, John? No, oh, right on the money? All right, it's all over. I like now. that, not PA. That's John posting, not me. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you I was said 35? I was hashtag. I got the admin to his channel, so I typed with him. Oh. <laughs> who's, who's got That's 35? not the number, though, right? <laughs> That's, that's, that's 39, that's not number, right? Red. Yeah, sounds right. Like he's already, he's already 30? playing on EA's keyboard there. Nobody has it. Our 30 was the closest. Look, Charlie. Did you, yeah, did you type closest. it? Did you type he's it in? Nah. Got a video record. <laughs> Well, it'll be Culver the closest. We're going to count everybody. Ciao, hey, what's up, bro? I tell you, he's in the house. HD and John R. got me beat. Oh, John R. has a saw beat. What'd he say? He didn't, but he's got me beat. I don't know how many he's got. That's what he's in this room beat. Uh, oh, yeah. He's got like a whole closet full of paper. <laughs> He's got no. He's got a walking closet. He might be closer to the ATC number four twenty. <laughs> right. That's a big ass shelf, dude. Four hundred and twenty bags of paper. He's got it. Just, dude. just think. Every yeah. day, gold is climbing. Every single day. You know how many yeah. things of uh, Lynch he has. He's got a museum. Remy. It, it, it's goddamn ridiculous, Remy. You have no clue. Oh I'll, tell God, you, I'll tell you what, Brad. You see that closet behind you? John yeah. I could probably fill that closet up. Oh, no. I've hung out with John Hart in the after party. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm yeah, telling you. Brad were there at the after party with John R. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you. it's not, And it's not just one. There's like four or five or six or ten or twenty. It's what it's closets, a, <laughs> but no, closets full. Well, <laughs> bags from each vendor. He has uh, probably like three closets full shelves. BC, full. what's up, brother? Did we get a final total on that shelf yet? Did we call it? Yeah, I wrote it 35. It was me in chat. It's 35 up there, yeah, yeah. I thought we just went through all that like two minutes ago. Well, no, Travis came in after the fact and said 37. <laughs> so, who got the closest one? 32 was the closest. Somebody overshot yeah. me by two. What are you giving them? I said 30. I don't know. Ask Grammy. <laughs> He's the one running it. I'm going back. Yeah, look. Remy's running this. Jeez, all right, we got 52, 39, 13, 69, 44, 39, 30 is my vote, 
55 Grandma Kelly, uh, 23 Donna, uh, 27 AU Diver, 39, that's over. That was Joseph Knowlton. Magnet Fishing Mary, she said 40. Brad said 32. Did I really call that, dude? Nope, Joseph Knowlton, double vote, 32. That was a double vote, <laughs> caught that. He voted three times. <laughs> yeah, I definitely called that. I said 30. That's funny. James Culver said 32. Yeah, but he did. Well, it's rigged. It, I have a good eyeball. I used to hand weigh weed, guys. I know how many bags are there by looking. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> I, I can eyeball real good without a skill, boys. <laughs> Thirty-two was closest, Mister Joseph. Later, he changed to thirty-two. He called himself no. out. He, he said he called out a little later. He changed. That is James kind of cold. Oh, I know who that is. James oh, so it's rigged because I'm the brother. John, what's up, brother? He could uh, show you a little bit. John's quick on that button. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, John R? What's going on, guys? All right. Now, everybody guess who, how many bags of pay dirt John R has. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we already gave you hints. Where's, where's, where's the stash? <laughs> 732. Oh, I'm going to say. We said 732. <laughs> I got to at least get the look see, you know, like the how many candy corns are in the jar. I got to see what's there first. Well, let's just put it this way. Out of the gold nugget sales bags he just released, I think he's got uh Mary said 20,000. <laughs> yeah, speaking of gold nugget sales, I just called Mike today cuz my order hasn't been shipped out yet and I'm like, what the hell? Why isn't it shipped out? Because he's been having a little crazy week. Yeah. He's trying to make it. <laughs> well, there was a little confusing or confusion with the order. I guess they put my paperwork on his desk or something, and that's not where the paperwork goes. And <laughs> Oops. So, yeah. Up, Kelly, so he got come in. Care of, hard uh, he's going to ship everything out Monday. <laughs> he says, what a Brady Bunch thing going on here. <laughs> <laughs> He's just jealous. He wants to be out there with us. Call in and all things country. We get three more. We get three more people to come out. We can play tic tac toe. <laughs> that would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think James Link, is pretty good again. Links pinned it. Pinned at the top. <laughs> what the hell is tic tac toe? What are you trying go into the avatar? Now you got nine people up on the board. Everybody either puts an X or an L up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's great. That's kind of entertaining, dude. Yeah, that would be fun. <clears throat> That's hilarious. Come on. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> Let's get three more. I ain't, three more. I ain't hopping into the bottom corner of this bingo card. <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Don't be don't be shy. There's a couple get, more bags get like you got. Donna's saying tic tac toe. Don't don't be shy. You can play tic tac toe try. Yeah, I don't mind playing. We could play that. Dollywood Squares. I, I'm I'm pretty sure. Hang on. Links up at the top. Spin yep. at the top. Come on, guys. Let's get a game of freaking tic-tac-toe going on. That is kind of funny. <laughs> All things country shit. I need, I, need, I need to have pants on the play. You don't need pants on. As long as you're sitting at the desk, it's all right. Dude, if you come up on a live, it's it's a rule that you can't be wearing pants. What are you talking about? You need pants. <laughs> I'm not wearing pants. I got my jammies on. Oh, uh, looks like AU guys prospecting might be coming. Oh, <laughs> uh, Charlie coming up. Where's my controller here? 
go back to slaying some zombies. <laughs> Zombie killer. Kill them all. That God sort of man will still work. Well, I guess it will work. If you flip it around. Yeah, yeah. if I hold it sideways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's a full screen. I think we should start off a show one of these nights where we do a tic-tac-toe game at the beginning of the night Donna. and the loser has Donna, to be the all... for the night. <laughs> Donna, all you got to do is click the button and click the link at the top. We can play tic-tac-toe asshole. You know what I mean? Like the, <laughs> the beginning of the show. So whoever loses at the beginning of the show has to be the asshole for the rest of the show. <laughs> Mash their heads in. <laughs> well, that's not very nice, Mary. I, I just wish that it wasn't all. She's nice. Uh, I got a uh, big Irish nose, dude. I don't give a shit. That thing gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're trying to look around it sometimes, man. <laughs> Man, knowledge is man. I'll tell you what. There was a beautiful girl that I knew growing up, but she had the biggest nose. <laughs> I couldn't get past it. I tell you what, I couldn't get past it. Anything, like a fucking beach. Oh, oh, dude. Yeah, exactly. Got that freaking boom. A beach. You, you know, like. <laughs> you can't I, bag it and tag it, buddy. You are oh, not yeah. right, dude. I couldn't. I tell you what, it always just got to me. <laughs> I like had the opportunity to a couple times and like I never could get past it. Like every time we'd go to make out or anything, it'd be like her nose would be there, and I'd just be like, "No, nope, can't do it." <laughs> Barry said, "John, or no, I'm just joking." <laughs> God, Mary loves us all. <laughs> you know, I should have. Uh, then I should have like smacked her, broke her nose, and gotten her plastic surgery or something, you know. Oh, jeez. She's pretty cute. Besides, Mary, the if she's got a beak, how do you expect to put a bag on something with a beak poking out? Superficial. <laughs> Don't pick on Big Bird. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you got a big beak and you're trying to put a, a bag over, I'm sure that if bag beaks are doing the tickling, you know. <laughs> Her bag. She said, "Brad, she said, Brad, put a paper bag over her head." <laughs> That's why I'm saying, if she's got a big old beak, you can't put the bag over her head. It's gonna rip it on when you're trying to put oh, it on. I'm sorry, your bag oh. is still there. You know what it looks like without the bag. I'm sorry. I know how it is. I tried putting a bag on my head one time. Um, <laughs> all things countries over there saying Brad dating girls that look like statues on Easter Island over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, oh, 403, you don't want to be the asshole. You're scared. Mm. Is that what kind of what kind of Canuck scared, bud? I thought you were rowdy like the Aussie. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make a deal uh with Miller Prospecting since he wants some lynch mining pater. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we ain't even got started yet, Donna. <laughs> Charlie, what's up, bro? Oh, there we go. There yeah, we like, another one. See in the chat. I got a bag that no one's got. Check this one out. Cross Prospector Gil. Gil. Yeah. Never heard of Prospector Gil. Yeah, that was the last bag that he made up before he passed away. Hmm. Oh wow. Very nice. Hold on to that one. What? I don't remember him. When did he pass away, John? Uh, that was, I would say, three years ago. He passed away on a trip up to Alaska. He was dredging and had a heart attack out in the, the middle of nowhere. Ooh. Wow. His prospecting buddy, he hadn't returned back to camp when he was supposed to, so his buddy went to go up and go check on him, found him dead laying right next to the creek. 
Still uh, the that's the river hope, in three months. That's where I hope. That's where I hope they find me. <laughs> mm, that'll be Remy the River in three months. Oh, 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 oh one, one more. One, one more. I, I thought you were going to bed, Travis. Wait, wait, <laughs> yeah, wait. You know, how do you pick a winner out of six people? <laughs> Well, you got you got to get the three in a row. Tic Tac Toe. That's wait. how it works. Yeah, you got to get. Is, is the chat gonna pick who late. does the X? No. <laughs> no. Typically, you can throw up random arms and then see who who gets yeah, across the board. Know. It depends on the row up here. Well, then how are we supposed to pick an asshole? Because I don't. Know. The last yeah, person to throw up. Them. If if they don't get the block or the win, then they're the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you are prospecting. Says Miller Prospect and wants Lynch Mining paid art. So does the other 500 people that ordered before they shut down. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Things can change. Same with me. We're John missing a bunch of gift person. cards and stuff. They only owe me a $17 bag. Huh. Well, you're yeah. lucky. They don't owe me nothing. I've seen the signs. <laughs> they owe me a lot. <laughs> Yeah, too much. Yeah. That's not good. That nugget bucket sure wasn't free. The one you won? 403 Mary would deem you yeah, the cutest. Right. Ooh. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, there you go. <laughs> Culver, how's it going, brother? Okay. You mean this one? Yeah, man. You gotta yeah. come up on. You gotta come up on panel, panel, Donna, to, to get your XRO up there. We need one more person. Look at that. He just pulls hey, look, Remy's got the perma circle going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's man. it right there. How much is in it, John? Censored content. Sorry, uh, guys. Six grams, six point zero five grams. No. Oh, you've panned it out. Or, yeah, I got a video on it too. And that's what I thought is you panned it out. Yeah, we can we can move you to the center square, uh, Donna. Did you you just put the dirt back in there, right? Because you have the gold in your vial. Gotcha. In my case, yep. Night, Grandma Kelly. What are you saving oh, the dirt? Night, Grandma Kelly. Kelly. Oh, Mary right, has Kelly. come up live before. Mary, get your ass up here. Keep talking shit in the live stream chat. Get in there. Get in this. Later, Grandma Kelly. <laughs> oh, she'll, she'll tell you right to your That's face on, on panel, dude. <laughs> She's six <laughs> oh, Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. Go blue. Come on, Mary. Get up here. Let's go, go blue. Mary. <laughs> She's like, I'm at bed. My husband don't Donna. want me to be seen. I'm the can't be lying Donna. next to him. Donna, call in. <laughs> Let's go, Donna. Jeez. Just one more. Have a good night, Grandma Kelly. Who do we not have up? I mean, where's Kelly? Gold thanks Eagle? for coming by. We appreciate it. Where's Rock Butcher, Gold Eagle? Where's these boys? Oh, they're probably in bed by now. Oh, yeah, yeah past her bedtime. James, that uh, Australian stuff looked pretty awesome. Yeah, that was fun. Child, you getting ready to get out to the creek or what? Still frozen up there? Still. Still no, I, I was planning on heading out this morning, but uh, I woke up too late. And then once I looked at the weather and stuff, it was supposed to rain all day. So I ended up going over to my buddy's place and helping him try and get his graphics card installed. But we couldn't get the correct power or, like... Couldn't get it to work at all. We tried different power sources, everything, and it just wouldn't work. So he thinks he got Jude for like 125 bucks for this graphics card. Wow. But that was also to upgrade the new computer that I got to get the graphics card that he had so I can play some other games and stuff that we had downloaded and we're working on other things for the AU Guys gaming channel. Hmm. You have a gaming channel? Nice. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> John's uh, gaming out over there, killing some zombies, man. Yep. Oh, shit. He always is killing, killing zombies. Killing zombies. Nice. <laughs> I mean, 
here's here's the controller that's hooked up to my computer. <laughs> Is that play, PlayStation? Yeah. But I also have a file converter in there that switches the PlayStation controller over to like Xbox or Switch controller, just depending on button configuration that you want to use. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. You just okay. use your, your arm, generic. L, X. <laughs> Donna, can I borrow a few teeth? <laughs> as long as I can get a few too. I need like three. I need mm. like three. <laughs> Adventures, buddy. <laughs> Joseph Dalton said, "I recently scored two toothbrushes. Now I got one for each tooth." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You guys are a trip. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen that. Oh, yeah, I just seen that Joseph was like, "You got teeth, lucky." <laughs> I was like, "Dude," I was like, "I need a few." <laughs> oh crap, oh, man. God. I had a I had a partial, you know what I mean? It's just I, I ended up losing that one time and I don't know where the hell it is and <laughs> I don't feel like paying for another one. Somebody come up here and play tic tac toe with us. Yeah, dang it, come on. <laughs> Somebody, anybody. Somebody, anybody, need everybody. One more, one more person, that's it. I mean, I could ask Laura, but I don't want to do that when she's on the job. She needs to be working. No, you don't even worry about that. Yeah. Sounds good in the hood. It would yeah, okay. This, this is that wild gold from 2023. Hmm. Nice. How much did you end up with, Charlie? 7.553. Nice. You got an extra strong vial for it. Larry Gearhart, I'm going to sleep. Well, welcome to the show and good night. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I just say you're at work and she's like, oh, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, that's your girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. She's been watching. She's out there creeping, bro. She's lurking. That's funny. <laughs> I'm like, well, welcome to the show. And good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Hey, Charlie, one of these times I'm going to have to go with you guys up to uh, Nugget Lake. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on trying to get out there as much as possible. Oh, really? Yeah. Right now, it's primarily going to be weekends because I have to work Monday through Friday. Right. Um, I used to work. My my uh, my birthday falls on one of the weekends, and I'm mostly going to be taking the Wasaki Prospecting Club, the Wisconsin Michigan Prospectors Club, out there and showing them like the spot and the area, the location, geology. Like I can show you every single different layer. I've got like drawn right. diagrams of how the creek is broken up with different layers, right. different colors, the different clays right. that you're going through, the amount of gold that you're finding per layer. Like I've got it all broken down to a science. I've dug holes out there like to the point where I'm like this, digging into the hole, pulling out material from the creek, all hand shovel. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're pulling on average about a gram a weekend out of that hole. That's, holy that's not bad, man. All right. That's nice yeah. hole. Damn. Hey, hang on one second so we can get Joseph situated. Um, I mean, dude, there's a, there's, a, there's a link at the top of the chat when you scroll up, bud, and that's a StreamYard link. When you click that, you'll have to set up a StreamYard this, account with your YouTube. weekends. And you can actually get into our live panel there, and PA will nice. be able to put you up on the panel. I don't think he needs to, to start an account just to get on. No, you don't. You don't have to? No. No. When you're going through StreamYard, it made me make an account. You got had. <laughs> ATC, come on up here. Call in. <laughs> 
And I still have like seven buckets sitting out on my front porch yet that I still have to go through because my sub pump that I have for running my VDR cleanup sluice took a shit on me. So I haven't had a chance to run that material yet. And that's all got to go add to that total. Hmm. Right. Was that how much material you got? Second mile? What is that? that Um, There's about seven five gallon buckets filled up about three quarters of the way full of cons. That's a good good material to run there. But then again, if I don't end up running it, I can always just stockpile it, end up using it as like fill for the pay dirt bags and just classify it as unsearched cons and then add like a point one and sell 15 bucks a bag. Mary, Mary's coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Oh, there wow, we got the net. Boom, we got it all the middle. We yeah. got it all in the middle. Thank you, Mary. There you go. And the middle wins. <laughs> Hi, you know. Mary. Good job, Thank Mary. you for coming Mary. up and playing tic tac with us. <laughs> <laughs> You ready for this clown town? I guess I have to get my camera stand. <laughs> Welcome, Mary. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the circus. Tell Mary. Tell him not to speak. Hey, I'm on the way you got to go. Tell him not to squeeze his arm in there. What's everybody rubbing? Put her next to her favorite person, bud. Put her right next to me. She can hang out right here. Let's do it again, right? Next to Remy, and I can smack them once. Mary, do the O. Help me out. The O. Do no. Terry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's like, get her, guys. <laughs> All right, ready? Uh-oh. One, Kitty two, there. three. Oh, crap. <laughs> what are we looking at? Oh, geez, <laughs> oh, everybody went X. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> All right, hang on. One at a person. Start with wrench and go right to left or left to right and then down. That's too confusing. He's going zero. Yeah. He's going, oh, I'm going. You got too much going on in. <laughs> I'm going. Oh, down the middle. Down the middle. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, there's, can't there's wait to see you, Mary. Can't like wait to see you, go to Jericho, yeah. and a few yeah. others. Like we had stuff up on the screen, and like one person at the top started eating chips, and we ended up passing the bag down to everybody that was on the panel because we all like <laughs> worked together. And then by the time it gets down to me at the bottom, I looked at it, and there's only like one chip left in the bag, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, dude, too funny. <laughs> but you know how much like coordination and like time it took to get that to work? Yeah. Days behind screen trying to get all that to like work out right and get it to look right. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to like get six people to work together. <laughs> Pretty cool. You got to go one corner to the other. Hey, we can do a freedom fest. Curtis, Curtis. Curtis. See, Curtis. freedom fest falls on the weekend of my birthday, and I got plans with the Wasaki Club up here in Wisconsin. Hey, hey, hey! But <laughs> I know. We're, we're Curtis, I don't have yeah. birthday <laughs> real name. All I'm doing is Jamie like, Lee. Yeah, the next couple I months. got it. Okay. Hello, David. Thank you. New, new, looks like a new person in the chat. David, sup, sup. Sup. Oh, David. What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> That's all what I can think of. You walk into. Into. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Oh, it just reminds me of that commercial. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Man, <got> the kitty. 
Still got all them kitties, Mary? Did you get rid of some of them? <laughs> I'm going to begin with about three of them. Remy, I'll, I'll call you sometime and we'll talk about that one. <laughs> yeah, the one that was just, I just showed you is the one that likes Brewer's voice. Every time he's on panel, she comes up and knocks my phone out of my hand. Well, you're going to you're gonna have to send that cat to Brewer's then. <laughs> I don't know, sir. He said no. In 1998, called it wants its ad campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, we were trying we're, to play we're football, all, we're all living when things were great, and we can't help but that we go back to the 90s. What are oh. we talking about? We were playing tic tac dumbass. <laughs> we like to talk about gold, though, usually. Oh, we get six of us to do it. Look at that cheddar. It's right there. Oh, is it, this is what we do. We all got cheddar. You want to bed, John? I'll yeah, see you, buddy. Five thirty comes early. Yes, Later, sir. John. Good night, Randy. Yeah, have, fun on, have, have fun on that excavator tomorrow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I will. Scream. I hit the wrong button. I'll see you, bud. <laughs> she hit Later, the wrong button. Good night, everybody. Good night, John. Yeah, now, Ranch. Have a good one, man. <laughs> Down the fire. Sorry. That's funny. It's good to get a good laugh, everybody. Thank you. Got that right. Yeah. So, Remy, Remy is the, the asshole or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's genetic. I can't help it. I'm Irish. <laughs> Wrench voted off the island. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this torch. Oh, if I was oh, stuck on an island with all you guys, I'd have to start drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you ain't already. Let me make you big, John. Appreciate you coming up to make that happen, Mary. Thank you. That was funny. That was awesome. Oh, dude. Hey, James. <laughs> oh, look at all them nuggets, man. Yeah. Whoa, that great big one right there is mine. <laughs> Which one? That one? I want to send that one. Yeah, that's that got one. my birthday's coming up. You can always yeah. send that to me. You got to bring that. You got to bring that to Freedom Fest, John. Nice. <laughs> Mary's going to get it. Holy. <laughs> How much is it? If that one's coming to Freedom Fest and he's hiding it, then yeah, I'm coming down. <laughs> Look at that, dude. Look at that. Holy. That's sick. That's chunky in there. That's a nice sound, buddy. But that'd probably break one of the 3D printed pans. Oh, look at it. Dude, nice. For those that are under 18, we are warning you now gold porn is being shown. So get ready for your tank sheets. (laughs) (laughs) Censored content. Oh, oh, you got dubbed. Nice. Real quick. <laughs> you got, there's a couple <laughs> nuggets in there. <laughs> My mom and dad said I could be anything I wanted to be, so I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look I at that, that hanging out of that. Oh, oh, man. Wow, man. No that way. Gorgeous. That is badass. <laughs> Mint. Is that yeah, crystal that's ice gold? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that is so nice. And probably I got to get a tissue, guys. Hang on a minute. COA is oh, probably for him all. <laughs> he's, he's running around his house getting all this nice gold. What the hell? <laughs> You got Remy. You got Remy running around looking for tissues. That's not good. Oh, look at that! Wow! Whoa! Where'd Whoa. you get that? That's my line. Dude, uh, NorthernNevadaGold.com. Holy oh, fuck! Jeez, wow! Look at that. Have to check that wipe that wow. website out. Yeah, northernnevadagold.com. Okay. Yeah. Why, PA? You can't, you're not working. You can't do anything. I know. 
<laughs> so why no, not? Man. Duh. I mean, I can look. I can look. I, I you can look, but you can't to, touch. It's okay. I would have to give, well, I'd have to give Mrs. Mrs. Patriot. I would have to give Mrs. PA Patriot to uh, approve any kind of purchases. <laughs> 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 oh. I'm going to send the vote. She's going to tell you no. Oh, Joseph said he was so close. Put it back. Yeah. Put it back. Oh, that's a little too far. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Joseph, so good. Yeah, this is going to hear his requirements for that case, Remy. Oh, my oh, God, dude. Bad. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, look at that. Look, uh, yeah, look at that. Floor. <laughs> Talk about the shiny. <laughs> oh, dude, I made a mess. I remember all those videos. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I remember that case getting full. This is one occasion I will say looking and not touching is safe. It is not cheating. <laughs> Hold on, I got one more. Oh, he's got one, one more. more. <laughs> one more. Hang on. Hey, being an enabler. He's like right a kid now. in a candy store. Dude, he's got the candy store. Oh, he's but, the candy store no, owner. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, when, when gold goes to $10,000 an ounce, he's going to be independently wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> All things country. Look at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, That's an MVP comment right there. <laughs> Holy. Holy shit, dude. Wow. Chunky. Oh, this is great. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Make my cheeks hurt. Oh, wow. Oh, thanks for keeping it PG, though. I appreciate it. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is some funny shit. God darn it, dude. <laughs> oh, oh geez. Yeah, I think yeah. we ran that dude off. So, if John. Eden says, I got to stay by John R. That way, when he finds the goal, I can swipe it and run, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, John, John, listen. Lose the smile. <laughs> this guy has got, dude, he's got I'll the biggest candy kid shop face ever, dude. Oh, I'll just stay by John Dude, this guy has got it, bro. He's got us over here with hard ons, man. <laughs> Not me, Remy. That's your problem. Man, I got, I got one for that AU right now. I tell you right now, he's got the mother load over there. <laughs> That's better than a big booty. Oh, yeah, I got a lot, bro. I, I'm not gonna lie, dude. That, that's not pretty candy, bro. I'm so glad Remy yeah, got his camera. Awesome. <laughs> Did y'all see Joseph? <laughs> I'm getting you all that down there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, what's this about playing with nuggets? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sunday night before the apocalypse, I'm drinking homemade wine from a coffee cup, watching grown men play with their nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Jerry, you're so wrong. Uncle yes. PA, Dave. <laughs> this is one of the better live streams in a while, guys. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. Are we still here, Dave? So where are y'all from? <laughs> Jeez. Where are you from, David? <laughs> where do you live? Yeah. <laughs> and do you have any gold? You tell me where you live, I'll tell you after. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, Terry Curry. Mary, you know that made me porny. 
<laughs> what happened to John R? You jumped off? I'm still oh, here. Dude. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> that is a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> hey, put your Joseph. other ears on. You might be able to see them. Look at Joseph. <laughs> I need I need new ones actually, man. It's kind of blurry. <laughs> oh, PA, look at Joseph's laugh comment. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I did the cheap the cheap water based lotion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a I had a holiday <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Dude. did you see the one before that? <laughs> oh, that no. was the worst part. You know, put the one. I seem to put it back, comment. That was great. You right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just laughs now. <laughs> we are. We're talking about nuggets and, you know, gold porn. And <laughs> yes, we Everybody's are. Everybody's getting all loud and excited. <laughs> 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 we gotta have some fun. We're all gonna die tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you see it, Randy's gonna just... die with this tiny tool in his hand. <laughs> it's the apocalypse, bud. We're all a little crazy right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we got 40 days left. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Oh, oh, dude. Oh, man. I'm just. Uh, yes, so, it is. Donna, you sure came up. I needed a second woman up here. <laughs> Thanks for weeks back. I don't know, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, we had a dog gone up here showing us uh, <laughs> fossilized walrus penises. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, we, at least we're not Remember picking that? a bone with somebody. Remember that, Rami? When dog gone came up and showed us the fossilized walrus penis? That's why I said I'm never picking a bone with anybody again because I know there's somebody with a larger one. <laughs> like this goddamn bit, dude. The thing was huge, bro. This guy, you guys are laughing at night, night screaming, I'm like, out. what the hell? He's got a walrus penis, like, <laughs> like yeah, fossilized. <laughs> You're cracking up. Oh, dude, you knock somebody out with that thing. That's about as big as a baseball bat, bro. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude. That. <laughs> All things country, <laughs> plural or <laughs> singular. <laughs> and it's his. Oh, my grandma's just jealous. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Actually, Mary, my my family is from the country. I can't blame that my great uncle Harry was a horse. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're country where I'm from, Mary. Mm, what does that mean? Your sister fucks horses? No, I'm saying you know, you know, it's country folk. You know what I'm saying? Great, great uncle Harry might have been a horse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, dude, we don't need to be talking about my member size. I might make people embarrassed. Wow. Okay. Go find out why their mom's breath is so fresh. You know, you have a mouthful of Tic Tacs. That's what happens. <laughs> Mary will keep will, will, will keep us in line. You better believe that, Laura. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take the garbage out quick. Um, <laughs> well, Charlie, why didn't you take Remy with you? I was going to say, I'm still here. What the hell? <laughs> oh, shit. He couldn't get the bag over his nose. I'm gonna take the trash out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Donna. Hi, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> Where you been, Donna? Oh yeah, she had to see a lady on a lamb. Well, since we're dying tomorrow, she was getting a for- she was getting a safety meeting in. Oh dude. <laughs> 
permanent. <clears throat> Man, dude. Big turns. Big turns. We're about, we're about big changes here. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, right. Jim, I'm not the boss. I just have no filter. Oh, we got celebrity in the house. Sean from Brock the Magnet Fisher. What's up, brother? <laughs> Brockton, how you doing? Hello. Hello, Hello. Brockton. You guys have been live for a long ass time. Holy shit. Yeah, we usually do three, four hours on Sunday night here. Go big or go home. You don't shut up. That's the problem. Uh, what's that? I said, PA never knows how to shut up. <laughs> oh, jeez. Me neither. That's why we hang out for so long. Yeah. <laughs> Send it. How you doing, Brock? What's going on, brother? Now, PA, you know you're not speaking his language, right? I'm not? No, you're using your arms. <laughs> See, even my girl Laura down in the chat says, no, I never shut up. I mean, if I shut up, I'm probably <laughs> listening and analyzing, and there's probably, I, I, you know. Good reason behind it. Yeah, yeah, I'm being quiet for a reason. Yeah. He's, put, he's, planning his, he's planning his comeback. <laughs> uh, either that or i'm thinking this this person's uh you know like uh they're doing something dumb and i'm like mm. mm -hmm. you, you can't you can't beat a dead horse <laughs> you can only sharpen the crayon so many times <laughs> that don't last so i should call him Bach, Bachton, Mary? man i never You're get the right 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 i just right ate them <laughs> My favorite color, red. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite, man. I like that one. Tastes like strawberries. <laughs> Doggone's coming up. Give me a wave, doggone. <laughs> Texas Don is like, good grief, LOL. <laughs> oh, my God. He's, he's probably bringing his thing with him. <laughs> What's up, doggone? <laughs> How you doing, bro? All this tonight. Oh, boy, here it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there it is. He's got his walrus penis. The fossilized walrus penis. <laughs> that's a dang bat, bud. That's a bumper right there. <laughs> <laughs> Off an old Buick, bro. <laughs> yeah, that looks like an attitude adjuster. <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude adjustment. <laughs> oh, man. That is a fossilized walrus penis, Donna. <laughs> That's what we were talking about. You wouldn't want to beat around the bush with that one. <laughs> oh, dude. It is for real, Donna. It was always Texas gold. Donna. If this was solid gold, I'd probably just go on vacation. <laughs> You wouldn't want to chomp I, down on that to find out if it was gold. How you been, brother? Everything good? Good. good. I've been lurking. You guys are cracking me up. <laughs> Appreciate you coming up, bud. You had us dying last time you were up. <laughs> Not every day you get to see Wallace Peters. That, that's the whole package. Remember, remember guys, he's the whole package. He's nuts with the bone, okay? He's the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was great, dude. I mean, dying. <laughs> Holy crap. I never go live without my walrus penis. Just, just, that's the whole package, guys. Right? <laughs> Oh, you use that as a cane, bro. That's a kickstand. Oh, God. That's a kickstand. Legitimate, man. That's a kickstand for like a boss hoss. <laughs> okay, if I had a water piece, I would totally make a YouTube video of me bringing it to a I'm not taking anything less than 10. That's great, bro. <laughs> 10 grand. 
Look at you. <laughs> I can see somebody doing that too. Could you, could you imagine the thumbnail for the the video and the caption for it too? <laughs> I take a penis to the pawn shop. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Uh, giant dong visits the pawn. <laughs> 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 that would be an awesome freaking title. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Big changes. <laughs> Big changes. <laughs> the world end tomorrow. We'll all go out laughing. <laughs> oh, dude. Jesus. Could you imagine like him grabbing that as an intruder comes in and he beats the intruder with that and then he goes back to his buddy and he's like, you know how I got beat up by a walrus penis? God. Oh, that brings a whole new meaning to mushroom stamping. Oh, oh, I wonder if this is on the live tab on, on YouTube. Oh, that would be the craziest thumbnail, right? Oh, my God. Oh, dude. Yeah, you definitely don't want to agree with the whole package. <laughs> You'll pop out of nowhere. So. Oh, bro. That's he's probably the funniest guy I've ever had jump on the fr that was probably one of the funniest scenarios I've had come on live stream, dude. <laughs> oh my god. god. Completely out of hand. Hilarious. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How are you going to get the walrus penis? Dinner in a movie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> competition for you, dog. Point three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Donnie, you cracked me up, man. <laughs> yeah, was oh, dude. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, that's a conversation starter right there. Right? I can say <laughs> unique content. <laughs> You give it one one penis up. <laughs> one penis up, yeah. <laughs> Can you show that to us one more time, dog? Oh, dude. From what I've seen, Joe. Can you, can you, can you show that one more time, dog? <laughs> Bring it on up. <laughs> now we have to get next to your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up to your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> is that the motion of the ocean or is that land motion? <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, actually, that is motion of the ocean. That's right. It's the walrus. <laughs> That's oh my god, Mary, your speech is for the first time ever. <laughs> Thank you, that was my first experience. Hold on, PA. Sing Guido, sing Calabot, can do bear boner. Can you imagine what Guido would say about that one? 
<laughs> but he ain't putting it in a stick and stirring his drink and then sucking on it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do live chat out of line, bro. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That was just a twizzle stick, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Where, do you, bad 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 bad. <laughs> Where do you put the batteries? That's what I'm saying. Where do you put the batteries? It runs on a 12 volt, guys. It ain't no little ones. Oh, dude. Oh, See what you started, doggone. <laughs> that one has an extension cord that you got to plug in. <laughs> yeah. That's a. Uh, oh, man. Dude. <laughs> Imagine the size of the female walrus of a giant. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. YouTube so too soft sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the algorithms are like going to be like, where the hell did they yeah, go? Yeah, I hope you're not monetized. <laughs> nah, they won't monetize me. They don't like my politics, man. Just watch. <laughs> walrus penis will start trending. <laughs> I can't get the watch out. I ain't got no friends. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Number one topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but don't Friendly. these live streams help you, PA? Well, I was being... <laughs> What's that? Don't the uh, live streams uh, help you with the uh, watch yeah, hours? They do, but I, I've been doing this for over two years, and I just can't get watch hours to get monetized, so I'm not even going to try it. Short oh, ain't paying nothing worth it anyway. Short. <laughs> Laura, Laura, anyway. Laura said like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> you want, you want white hours? I think that's a little larger than a hot dog, man. That's like one of the SpaceX shuttles. Hashtag MWPGA. I'm trying to put that together. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get me to the Walrus, Penis, DA. Gathering, gathering something? <laughs> Association? Money. Mammoth, Walrus, Penis, <laughs> Gathering Association. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let us in. Let us in on a joke there, ATC. I mean, you could walk around no your house problems. with that in your hand and have great company, again. and they wouldn't they know. That that it's great again. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. I mean, you could walk around in the house with a company, you know what I mean? And you could have that in your hand, and they would think it, a bat, it was like a bat or something and, like, put it in your hand. And, I mean, at the end of the day, by the time you tell it what it is, they're probably scarred. Like, like it. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You'll be like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Crawler being great again. <laughs> Can you imagine the sex ed for that? <laughs> it's got to be a big program. <laughs> <sighs> Lots of members. Well, we've got to see a little bit of everything tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> right? We all at the sky. I'll tell you what. <laughs> It's the second time now. It never gets old. <laughs> Dude, it got everybody going again. Oh. Yeah, Laura, it's not this bad. She knows. <laughs> Laura, you're fitting in. It's usually not this bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta have a way to flop it over. Oh, man, I can't. I I, I wore out a laugh unless somebody gets me going again, but holy crap. <laughs> it's oh, time, for cup of, time for a cup of job. I'm laughy stuff going, so just give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, I need coffee. I got the uh, dry mouth scenario. Doggone, you still all froze up up, up there? Or, or is it starting to thaw out some? I thawed yeah. out finally. Cool. Yeah. Where are you up in Alaska? I'm in Washington. 
Oh, Washington. All rain today. I hit the creek today and got a whole lot of point three, but all rain. Nice. Yeah, it's like one day it looks like spring here, and then two days later, there's like eight inches of snow, and then two days later, it looks like spring again, and then two days later, another four inches of snow. And yeah, it just doesn't want to make up its mind. We, we, we can literally have all four seasons in one day. Oh, you too up there, huh? Yeah, I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm just south of you. I'm in the hey, bear. Bam. Hey, P. Luke. My brother Luke is in the house. What's going on? How's it going, AP? <laughs> Tasty. I am good, brother. I could just get back to work. I'd be all right. You take Time it like back. a bitch. <laughs> right? <laughs> you good? Yeah. All right. It's like that movie, Scary Movie, where he's like, you take it like a bitch. <laughs> take it to the head. Take it to the head. Take yeah, it to the yeah. head. He's like, like talking and gagging. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's where the giant plant rolls him up in the silk sheet. <laughs> yeah. Like a J. <laughs> the big old weed leaf. <laughs> <laughs> or no, what was it? The fatty? Man, I ain't yeah. seen that in a minute. You motherfucker. <laughs> I just went to the bathroom and looked down and feel so inadequate now. <laughs> 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 oh, dude. <laughs> There's always something greater out there. It's the army man sitting in the grass. <laughs> that's why I'm that's why I'm okay saying I got the tic tac, man. I'm okay with that, dude. Compared to that, I'm the tic tac and I am fine with that. I am not competing with that. That's my arm. That's my arm. <laughs> Tic Tac, that's that's worse than being hung like a light switch. <laughs> At least it makes breath fresh. Going on, AP. Yeah, I've been told I, I'm it's hung like a baby. You know, while. nine ounce, fifteen ounces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, my name should have been Millimeter Peter, but. Uh, you know, I was just at the Australian Peter. Where? Yeah, I've been sitting on this for uh, a month or so. What? What was the nickname? Nice. What mine? Yeah. Millimeter no. Peter. Oh, I guess it's better than. Um... <clears throat> Wait a minute! Give me a second. I'll remember it. <laughs> One pump <punk> chill. <laughs> ne needle, needle, dick, the bug fucker. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell, dude? <laughs> Hung like a mushroom in a cornfield. Yeah, I just did a video on the Australian one today. It was a fun bag. Yeah, it looks like that's the same bag. Dog yeah. Dog. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. James Culver. Just didn't comment on it. Nice. <clears throat> I guess you didn't like the uh, the veggie might either, huh? No, man. <laughs> That's an acquired taste. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, well, you guys don't like Vegemite? No, I, I do, but it. No, like, I don't. Like there's, there's ways to eat it, okay? You don't just smear a shit ton on there. You no. have to start out with small amounts and work your way up. Mm -hmm. Then you work to a point where it's like, okay, that's almost getting to the point where it's too much, and then just dial it back a little bit, and that's like the perfect amount. Hmm. 
You, you can't just start out with a huge dollop on your, your butter knife and try and spread it on your toast and eat it. No, you'll gag yourself out. Now, Chris, Ooh, the, the Aussies over there say to spread a lot of butter on your, your bread first. A lot of mm, butter. Yeah. And then put the Vegemite on there. And it's really good. That's huh? what I did. It's still unknown. No <laughs> because they, they had Vegemite in South Africa, and I remember that shit. Hmm. <laughs> I still got to make a video on it. Luke, you're not feeling well? Send him prayers, brother. <laughs> I said, no, no, no Vegemite. No, thanks. <laughs> I hear you, Donna. <clears throat> I remember when uh, Mike Vendetta did his Vegemite video. Oh, and he yeah. said, here, try this to his kid. And his kid's like, yeah, that's not too good. <laughs> no. He said, that's kind of gross. <laughs> See, the other one that we had over in South Africa, it was called Marmite. Oh, Marmite, yeah. That's some mm. good stuff, too. All right, guys. My day comes early tomorrow, so I'm going to get off here. Thanks for having me up. All right, yeah. Travis. All right, Travis. Hey, you you up and, uh, sure, brother. Hey, brother. Good night, Mary. Good night, everybody. It's good seeing you. Take care. Bye, right. Later, Travis. Take care, bro. See you later. Later. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I started laughing. <laughs> All right, gang. I'm out of here, too. Y'all have a good night. All right, James. Good night, good night James. James. <laughs> have a good night. <clears throat> Hmm. See if that helps the, the echo on me. It's terrible trying to figure out how to kill that echo. Um, well, you would have to kill the YouTube <coughs> or YouTube. like completely mute it. Otherwise, you're just going to get a repetitive echo that you keep hearing because you're hearing the stream yard. And you're hearing the YouTube at the same time. And YouTube is usually delayed anywhere from three to five seconds compared to what we're talking about on StreamYard. Yep. <laughs> Joseph said, I heard the bubbles. <laughs> hmm. uh, what? What bubbles? <laughs> I'm half deaf. I don't hear shit anyway. <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Seriously, ask Laura, dude. She sit on the right hand side of me, dude, and she talks in a low tone. I ain't hearing it. I literally, dude. <laughs> hmm. Got to raise your voice when you're on this side of me. But if hmm. you scream at me, it'll like make that ear hurt. That's really. <laughs> Those are some. Someone's got a loud aquarium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I was just checking the bubbler real quick. Make sure the filter was clean. Make sure the filter was clean. Did you clean it out real good? Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I might have to check it a few more times tonight. <laughs> you can never clean those pub bubblers like the no, way you no, know. No. So they're first. always having to be cleaned. Safety first. Yeah. I just have I just have a safety rod. <laughs> yeah, I don't have selective hearing. If somebody's doing shit I don't like, I put my foot down. I don't like that. Don't let her BS you. I definitely don't. No. Uh, selective hearing with the kids and stuff, definitely. But <clears throat> certain situations, I can definitely <coughs> ignore them. But that's because of kids. I don't know. My When I was married, my old wife could say shit to me, and I could seriously fucking not hear it. And I, she would say it, and fucking I did not hear it. Oh, I, no. learned that, I learned that I from taking that. care of kids, though. That, I know that one all too well there, Brad. Like, uh. I, I could be looking at my wife straight in the face and she could be telling me something and I still don't hear it. Yep. Well, 
I suffer from that, but it's like, I don't know. You're, you're not there, but you are like, you, you're not seeing through your eyes. You're seeing images and memories and stuff or thinking of stuff and you're looking at it in your mind, but you're not actually looking out your eyes and you're sitting there. I, after about, after about the third time I get up and do whatever she wants. <laughs> Jeez, John, how many of I get yelled down? at and I'm like, what? Like I said, he, uh, doesn't buy one. Couple it's not selected. There, huh, just... <laughs> Aussie oh. bags there. Just a couple, huh? He's got a few. <laughs> He's got at least 20,000. He's about to go back and forth from side of the room again and back and forth. <laughs> and grab this and this. And... That's one happy man, though. I can tell you what. Yeah, that's the Bohemians. Five oh, that's in. those bags. Okay, so you're the one who has those. <laughs> I've seen those on a few channels. Yep. Can't just buy one. <clears throat> Shoot, man. I'm going to get to try that native Alaskan ground, though, man. I can't wait. Like I still said, Remy, I'll, I'll figure out how to pay for the shipping. Just send me a five-gallon bucket of dirt. Oh, my God. I don't know, man. 15 grams right here. I'm trying to melt gold together and save it up. No, you, you don't have to search the dirt or anything. Just send me a five-gallon bucket of dirt. Right, Mary, thank you for coming up. I yep. appreciate it. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, Mary. Good yep. night, Good night, Mary. Good night, Mary. Tell Whipple not to squeeze your charm in there. Oh, she already did. <clears throat> she made it known. <laughs> yep. Yep. Facts, that was facts. Yeah, I I don't Yeah, exactly. Hundred hundred, not fifty fifty. Exactly freaking right. Big, big, big facts right there. I like that. That's a hundred hundred, not no fifty fifty shit. See you, Brock, and have a good one. Thank you for stopping by, brother. Appreciate it. Oh, you got the Otter Creek jugs, too. I seen somebody <clears throat> Aussie doing a pan and video in their backyard with that tub. I think I did. This is a custom one. Somebody had Otter Creek. Maybe that was someplace up there in Alaska that they do gold. I'm telling you, Brad, you can fill up that whole closet behind you, dude. Easy. No, that's Cripple Creek. Uh, but Charmin's so soft. <clears throat> I even got one that nobody has right now. What one you talking about? Ooh. This was the last bag of his high grader on his website after I bought this. It was sold out. <coughs> was that the classy classifier one? The high grade one? Which one? The high grade? This is a, a crystalline gold. Is that the same one who does the classy classifier one? I don't know. I thought I'd seen that label before. The high grade. I think Flower Gold Wizards just had that brand. I may be wrong, but he just had a mail call video with something that was the classy classifier bag. And it looked like it. I think it was the high grade company. I may be wrong, but I, I think I, I just know. remember no, seeing that's it. No, that's Gold Nugget Sales, the high grader bag. Yeah, this is Gold Nugget Sales. Yeah, that's not the same as the Flower <laughs> that he did. 
Yeah, it had yeah, it kind of had the same kind of person on there. Yeah, different, different company. Looked a real similar label. Nice yeah. class. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime somebody flips me off, Mary, I just remind them, thank you for telling me I'm number one. Number one, a-hole. Yeah, he's going to play me a song about walrus penises. <laughs> I can uh, tell. The dog on, bro. You funny man, dude. <laughs> I can bust out a few other facts. Uh, this dude, bro. I am never going to forget this again. fucking guy, bro. He, that was the funniest damn shit I've ever had happen. This guy pop up on screen with his giant fucking oh, leg. Yo, check yeah. this out. <laughs> Yo, you you gotta you gotta make a walrus penis shirt now, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Mine's bigger. <laughs> could, could you imagine? Could you imagine having him uh, pop up on other people's like random streams, like those other ones that show their twig and berries, and show him the big walrus bone, and then dip out? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could catch the porn bombers, that would be kind of funny. I'll probably get a lot more views. Dog on walrus. <laughs> Be careful, you get hurt with that thing. That's a nice bag. <laughs> <sighs> Man. Down there showing off bags. He's like, look at this one. Uh, that's a three grammar there. The last one was a five grammar. Yep. They just keep coming out. Yeah, bags for days. I think the smallest bag of dirt. A lot of hard work right there he's got, bud. That I've got is this one right here. That's the biggest bag. Oh, damn. No, this is the smallest bag I got. Oh, I thought you it, said that was the biggest. It's a dime bag. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's oh, a whole pack where I'm from. What are you talking about? That's five bucks, not ten. <laughs> from the JP's birthday bash. That's still sitting up there. <laughs> Got an awesome piece of petrified wood sitting up there that I got from Native Arizona Adventures. Hmm. <laughs> All things country still going at it down there. <laughs> three LXR bags two of them say silver one says uh, 0.10 which I think is a tenth of a gram yep 0.10 yeah a tenth of a gram these typically, these typically have a lot of cool crystals and other stones and stuff in them that you gotta pick LXR bags bag. are nice yeah, the silver means it was the silver Patreon uh, tier. And then I've got a Keegan Rose Sapphire bag back here that I got to get, <laughs> get to. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> and then the other one that I brought in that I showed off before mm. was that Vector Gill's bag. And I've got a few bags over here that I got from Jericho that have Charlie. material from Rock Butcher. John, pull all those up. Yeah. That's that's from Brian Wilder from Bering Sea Gold. Yeah. Yeah. Three. 
Yeah, his bags are nice. His bags are nice. They're usually pretty loaded. Yeah, they're uh bought these around Christmas this year. Claim fifty six. Yep. From Claim fifty six. Hot spot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you in the ghetto, doggone? <laughs> Man. Uh, he, he moved to the alley all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> no graffiti on your wall, so it ain't that ghetto. <laughs> Alpha Pater from Lynch Mining. The Reserve Bag XL. <clears throat> this is a Reserve XL jar. Lynch Mining Black Label. I'm not good enough to play a song there, Miss Donna. I'm learning now. I'm getting it. Another 20, 30 years I'll have it licked. I taught myself how to play. Black Label Bag from Lynch Mining. Doggone's hitting the creek. <laughs> just playing with this shit. Oh, I was just I'd looking at moving that. those boulders around behind you. Hammering some feather wedges, break them into smaller pieces. <laughs> Took too long off and uh, still short of the green screen, <laughs> huh? Green screen, how do you do that? Green screen, you go down into your settings, Left. down at the bottom, there's that settings wheel, and then there's the thing that says virtual background. I was trying to. Uh, and depending on your images and stuff, like mine's just got the basic ones that are up here. You know, like what is it layouts? Is it layouts? No, you, you go you go to virtual backgrounds. Audio recording layouts guess. That's what it says in settings. General. Because yeah, when I click on settings that says camera, audio, virtual background, and hotkeys. It's virtual background. I don't have that. You go under settings. It says general, camera, audio, recording, layouts, and guests. Uh, then try uh, layout. Layout is just Yeah, I don't know. Yours are different than ours. It might be in your video where you have to click on your video stuff and then go in there and there should be the option. Here. This when is my out. very small bag of pater. It could it could be different on your side because you're the the admin of the page. Mm -hmm. From Felix Pater. Nice. The sample, sample Pater. Crop solo layout to show background image. Yeah, on mine it was just a, in in virtual background.
Yeah, when we go backstage, I'll show I'll, I'll present the screen and show you what I'm seeing on my screen so you can see it. Another one. Surprised you don't got this, uh, Rocky or Brad? Which uh, Felix Pater sample? No. I don't have that one. Got to go get it, man. It's only $2. One per household. Hmm. But I got two. <laughs> one of... One of these is from 2021, and this one's from 2023. Oh, dang. So. One a year, huh? Yep. I even got some backyard prospecting pater. The dragons pater. Yeah, I remember those bags. I I, I got the uh what is it? The, the dragon pater, the uh the big bag of this. Have you guys tried any of Ark's gold pater bags? They're doing a mooch bag. No, I I I want to try Ark's gold. The, I'll tell you right now the la the last bag that I got from them it was a really nice heavy bag at a good price. Really? Who who who? Uh, Peter Getaway. He's done a few nice ones from Ark's gold. So. Yeah, this is only a, a few of my haters in this big old box here. <laughs> Besides when I was just showing you guys. Hey, I'll take five random bags for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get headed for the night, y'all. Uh, it's like nine o'clock in Alaska. It's one o'clock in Vermont. <laughs> So I need to start getting ready for Alaska bedtime, and I need to go to bed. Not <laughs> just say you're I'll leaving, bro. You don't have to explain all that. <laughs> no, it's just weird. I've been on a weird schedule. I got to keep it. So over here, we're four hours ahead in time. You know what I mean? If I'm going there to work, I got to be acclimated to my sleep schedule. I've been keeping it that way. I wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning and I go to sleep at one o'clock in the, in the morning. Hmm. And then that way, when I get there, I'm waking up about six o'clock and I'm going to bed around nine. Yeah. Cause it's, it's going to be tough with no sun change and stuff, no nighttime. And you know, that, that sleep is going to mess with you if you're on that other time frame, and I'm expected to go to work up there. So I've already preset my sleep schedule for that. But anyways, yep, it's like Alaska bedtime now, so I need to get going. Hmm. Y'all have a good night. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Have a good night, Remy. Nice meeting you, Thanks John. Thanks for coming up, brother. Nice meeting you, too. Good seeing you again, doggone. Bye. Brad, Bye. have a good Bye. night, bud. Later, Remy. <laughs> Later, Remy. Peace out, dude. Good night. Y'all be cool, man. All things country. The first dirt he ever did was a Felix sample. Then I had it delivered to every address of everyone I knew. Managed to get most, almost get 0 0.01 grams. <laughs> Is that from one of those bags? No, he got it sent to everybody he knew. So he did every sample bag he could from 15 or 20 different people, and he got 0 .001. That's it from 15 bags? Well, I don't know if it was 15, but... I was going to say, holy cow. But it, I imagine he at least had three or four or five of them. Uh-huh. Huh. That's why I haven't done any. I want a pan dirt that has gold in it. They never contained any weightable gold. Uh, Did you do total all things country? 
Were you, were you messing around on eBay and getting them? <laughs> or, or Amazon or something like that? <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're two dollars per uh, sample bag. Yeah, but if I don't have no gold, I don't want to pay waste two dollars. Oh, there's probably like five pieces in there, five little tiny specks of gold. Yeah, fly poop. Yep. Yeah, throw that shit back so it grows bigger. See around here, that's all we find. Up you there, get right? lucky if you find a piece big enough to pick up, but everything around here is small. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Most of it, you can feel it, but that's about it. Mm hmm. Hey, so I got a question, Charlie. When you go up to uh, Nugget Lake, uh, how far is the river off of where you park? Do you have to walk like a good distance or is it that one river right along that road? Um, typically where we park, we'll walk maybe like, let's say 10 minutes to where we dig. Uh -huh. but you can also walk from like the campsite. They have like groomed yeah. walking trails from the campsite all the way down to the creek, along the creek, all that. And then you'll see little trails off where people go in and they go to prospect and stuff. So there is like walk trails, like where we go down, we even put like stones into the bank where there was a muddy hill where we kept slipping and sliding and stuff. We built yeah. stones out of flat rocks that we pulled out of the creek and made like nice walking trails for people to get down there and everything too. So it's, it's pretty nice. Cause when I was there last summer, I think where we parked, we parked way at the very end where you could go canoeing or kayaking, whatever, in that big old lake. Or whatever, yeah, that's, 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 where, that's the long walk in because from there to where we dig is almost like half a mile. We, we um, dig almost all the way at the very end of the park. Hmm. And is it, and is it that stream that runs along close to that street that goes through the park at Nugget Lake? Or is there another? Uh, yeah, it's like that same hand? creek. It's just further up. There's another branch that goes off, which is the Rock Elm. We're on the Plum Creek. Hmm. Because Rock Elm goes around the other side of the central uplift from the Meteor Impact, and Plum Creek goes up the other side of it. So I'm, I'm even trying to think if the creek that I was in, I wonder if it's the creek here, one that, second, uh, where the gold is. Is there gold in both of the creeks or just the yeah, one? there's golden, there's gold in all those creeks there. Oh, really? Because, yeah, I, like we're, we're digging, we're we literally dig the whole creek from side to side, five feet deep, and we're finding gold in all of it. No, shut. Sure. I'm going to have to meet you guys up there one of these damn weekends or one of these days this summer. Okay, because, like, where we go digging. You guys are closer to the camp, uh, the uh, campgrounds, though, aren't you? No, because, like, where we park on the road is, like, right over in here. And then where we, we prospect... Is right there on the dropped pit, but oh. the campsite is on the other side. Is on the other side. So what we do is we go out of the campsite, come up the road, uh huh, come to this intersection here, because here's the one creek that goes up and around the other side of the central uplift that comes down into the park. Okay, and then. There's the other one that comes in from over here by where we park, where there's a little gate over here, like a cable, and then we follow the trails down to our spot. Huh. And then we come in and prospect right over here on that one bed. And are you guys actually, uh, so you, you don't even go into Nugget Lake? Into the yeah, we do. We, we, we go into the park. And then you guys we're walk literally out right on the edge industry. of the park where it starts, and then we're working our way down the creek. Huh. We're moving like 12 feet at a time 
digging pretty much everything across and then the hole that we started yeah. we just dumped everything in behind us i'm gonna have to go up there oh, one of these yeah. days with you because like in one weekend we moved 65 buckets of dirt holy cow from just uh stream sluices and stuff like that yeah just running stream sluices but we also had three sluices going. We had like five people out there. Two guys were working the classifier and shovel. Guys were feeding the sluice boxes. Yeah. Somebody was processing the cleanouts and going through the cons, getting as much as we can there. And then we were bringing all that material back and running it for a second time through the cleanup booth and breaking it down even further. Wow. I'm going to have to go up for, uh, one of these days with you. Well, we're planning on going next weekend. Hmm. Me and my brother, Milwaukee, Matt, if we have you along, that means we can process and move a lot more material. Mm -hmm. I would say wear, wear bibs and stuff. We will have a pop-up camper and shit along. Um, so we'll have food and stuff back at the campsite. We can bring the Coleman grill with us right down to the creek so we can cook creek side and process and run as much as we possibly can. Yeah, I think from Chicago, it's about like a six-hour drive or something. From Yeah, but see, if, if we're planning on doing that, then, like, we'll, we'll make sure that it's worth your time coming up. And, you know, we'll make sure that you leave with a good smile on your face and a good heavy pan. Yeah. And I'm sure I'd be wanting to get as much as I can for all three of us, too. So. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, like, if... I don't know if you've seen any of like some of my shorts and stuff. I've seen some of your videos. I just haven't commented on them, but I seen your last one. I think uh, it was last year. I just never knew how much you guys got because you always did it on your live stream, and I never watched. All I mean, I went to a few of them, but not all of them. I don't know. It was in a video. I think it was labeled "Layers of Clay." Yeah, I don't remember when's, what was the last one I watched, but it's been a while. Yeah, but one of these weekends, I'm going to have to go up there with you guys. I was trying to get uh, Peter Getaway and Wisconsin Gold Rush to go up there one of these weekends, too. Yeah, it would be cool to get out with them again, too. Yeah. I haven't really heard much from Wisconsin Gold Rush. He's kind of like dropped off. I know. Uh, he he was just with uh, Peter Getaway uh, somewhere up in Wisconsin just recently. I uh, I don't know if you saw his video, but Wisconsin Gold Rush was there with him. Because I still have one of the classifiers that I got from Wisconsin Gold Rush yet. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It was originally his, it was a 316 punch plate. Mm -hmm. Like, see, this is a short that I made up from uh, one of my buddies that I took out there, but there's one of the biggest pieces that we found so far out of the hole. I've probably seen that video, too. Yeah. How and big is the hole now, Tom? That was his hole for, for that weekend. How big is that, that hole now, Tom? Um, which one? Because the one, the one that was behind the one that we dug last summer is already filled back in with all the material that we classified out of the hole that we dug now. That <laughs> one was about five and a half feet deep across the whole entire creek. And we dug down to a layer where the material was as red as my shirt coming out of the ground, but it was like this deep. But it was wow. super loose, light material. And then below that, there's boulders the size of SUVs. Holy cow. But that rust layer, if you follow back in glacial events and everything like that, and the different clay layers that we were going through, that deep red dark layer that we're going through is the initial impact from the meteor that hit four and a half million years ago. Huh. <clears throat> and we're finding buttloads of gold in it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> And there literally, no you, take, you take no a magnet to hit this place. dirt that comes out of that layer, and it just goes around the whole entire magnet. <laughs> All right, Terry, Carrie, nice, nice of you to come by, brother. We appreciate it. We'll be here yeah, every night, Sunday Terry. night almost. <laughs> 
we were over at the kids last week and uh, they ended up partying after everybody kind of went to sleep, so we just hung out. <laughs> I wonder if I could get to the what you call it here. Let's see. I posted a little video. I think I'm going to wrap this up. Of when I was in Wisconsin, but not a, not really a whole lot. Just put pictures that I've taken when I was up there. See if I can find some of them here. Because, I mean, this is like getting into the bottom of the hole. Our shovel was completely buried in the hole there. That's crazy. We're using a Green Mountain Gold Trap fluid bed classifier. Uh -huh. oh, I was using mine yesterday. And then we're also using the Prospector's Dream Barefoot Sluice that I have with uh, the Amazon Dream, like the stream mats that they have. Mm -hmm. The river mat, the river mats. Yeah, and then yeah. like, wow. And when we started that hole there, that that creek was like ankle deep. God. Yeah. Look see? at the layers coming out of there. <laughs> Got to make sure you break that clay up, man. <laughs> See, look, I was there. There's the little sign, right, Charlie? Yep. Who's that, Matt? That's Milwaukee, Matt. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut down the uh, the live, and uh, we can take this to the after party. Yeah, if you guys want to check out these videos, jump over to my channel. Check them out after we end here, but. I mean, there's there's some awesome, cool colors that you see. Like, he's going to show you right here. Look at this stuff coming up. Oh, yeah. Look at the colors that are in there. Yeah. All Things Country, Joseph Nolan, Donna. And that color change right there is where we're finding all those, like, as much gold as you could think in a pan. Hmm. Hold on, child. She ain't doggone. Um, everybody else who's in here, eight people. Lurkers, yeah, good night, everyone. Laura. All things country, we're Joseph, take, whoever else. We're going to take off. Good night, got everyone. Got a couple things I got to do before I go to bed. So we'll see you next week. PA Patriot and the boys out. Have a good one. <laughs>